Hi, everyone. We'll begin our 2021 commencement program shortly. But before we do, it's my great pleasure to introduce the extraordinary American harpist, Brandi Younger, who just a few days ago recorded a special performance in celebration of our graduates. Brandy has performed and recorded with a wide range of artists, including The Roots, Stevie Wonder, and Lauryn Hill. Her original music was featured in the Netflix concert documentary, Beyonce, Homecoming. And at the end of 2020, Brandy released her fifth album, Force Majeure, which is 11 tracks recorded with a single microphone in their living room with her partner, double bass player, Desron Douglas. A Pitchfork review described it as an impromptu record that feels like a rediscovery of common ground. Please join me in welcoming Brandy Younger. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brandy Younger. Congratulations, class of 2021. I'm so excited to spend this very special day with you. Thank you. 
Hello from Piper Auditorium. Let me be the first of many to offer you, the graduating students of Harvard's Graduate School of Design, my heartfelt congratulations. I love graduation, especially the pomp and circumstance of this important day, which is why I'm decked out in my academic regalia, truly sad and not seeing all of you in person, but still happy to gather here today for this YouTube celebration. I hope you enjoyed the university ceremony earlier today. I found it very moving to hear Ruth Simmons' thoughtful words and together recognize all of the graduates of Harvard University. Graduation is an important moment for all of you to pause and reflect back on your time here at the GSD, as unconventional and challenging as this past year has been. Throughout the last academic year, I've been reminded time and time again that design unites all of us, cutting across all our experiences, all our disciplines, all our geographies and all our futures to address issues of public health like the pandemic, as well as environmental, economic, social, and political issues that challenge, but also that unite us as global citizens. Now as always, but now more than ever, we need you, all of you, to lead those conversations. Please take the, work to look, take the time to look at all the work in the online exhibition of work by our graduating students. You'll find projects that address critical contemporary issues through design. Take the topic of housing, an urgent need across the globe. You'll find one project in the commencement show that adapts post offices across the US to support a social housing program. Another thesis goes to the very start of a given housing program to design the request for proposals to enable paths for reparations for black communities on Chicago's South Side. All of the projects you'll find in the commencement and thesis shows offer us new directions, new possibilities. All of this work gives me hope that we have a promising future ahead. But hang on now, before we embark on our next projects and chapters, we first have to graduate you. The GSD faculty and staff have queued up a unique celebration today, interspersing live and recorded feeds. I'm in an empty Piper auditorium other faculty will be broadcasting from other rooms in Gund, ensuring that we're all socially distanced, and still others will be calling from their respective locations across the globe. This setup is a little bit like a complex cable news network. One caveat, despite the amazing production team high output that's here working with us to make this ceremony so extraordinary, we're not professional actors. So you can probably count on a glitch or two as we live performers miss a cue or trip over what we're trying to say. You students have spent your time here presenting your work live to us in countless reviews. You should see this as your turn to sit on our jury. Enjoy the show. On this occasion, and in recognizing the underpinning that history provides us for justice, and that more broadly provides our value as architects, landscape architects, urban planners, and designers, I wanna begin by acknowledging that the land on which the school sits is the traditional territory of the Massachusetts people. We also acknowledge the Nipmuc and Wampanoag peoples whose histories are intimately connected to the history of Harvard University. Thank you. Every school year, the faculty and staff of the GSD are both happy and proud of this moment when we witness the transition of our graduates from students to alumni. This threshold moment is of immense symbolic value. It marks the recognition of achievement through study and through learning. We're proud of our graduates because we carry within us the sense of anticipation of the many consequences of your future individual and collective accomplishments. We'll begin today's events with the awarding of prizes, then we'll proceed to a musical interlude by the Tomika Reed Quartet and our class day address presented by the writer Gia Tolentino. Finally, we'll turn to the primary purpose of this afternoon, the presentation of diplomas to those students who have this year completed their work towards degrees here at the GSD. So without further ado, we'll now begin the commencement awards portion of the ceremony recognizing and acknowledging the students who have made outstanding contributions to their chosen area of study during their time here at the GSD. First, I'll present the school-wide awards. Those will be followed by awards given by the departments of architecture, landscape architecture, urban planning and design, and then awards given by the master in design studies and master in design engineering programs. 
First, the Gerald M. McHugh Medal is awarded each year to the student graduating from one of the school's post-professional degree programs who has achieved the highest overall academic record. This year, the medal is awarded to Robert Morris Levine, who's graduating today from the Master in Design Studies program. In addition to his stellar academic record, Robert earned this award for his relentless, thorough, most original, and critically relevant research, and for his reputation for being such a generous and resourceful colleague and peer to those who ever sought his guidance and help. The faculty have also noted and are deeply grateful for his intellectually indispensable and inspiring teaching assistantship in the Master of Design Studies program. Congratulations to Robert. Next, the Digital Design Prize is presented to the student who has demonstrated the most imaginative and creative use of computer graphics in relation to the design professions. This year, the prize is being awarded to two students, Matthew Pugh, who's graduating today from the Master in Architecture program, and Anna Gabriela Luisa Noalsko, who's also graduating today from the Master in Architecture program. Matthew's portfolio of computational work offers imaginative and technically sophisticated visions for an architecture that is animated by kinetic systems and enriched by creature-like objects that provide a compelling vision for a personalized Internet of Things, all imbued with a sense of humor and wit. Anna Gabriel's award-winning studio project, titled Center Periphery, demonstrates how artificial intelligence can become a powerful multi-scalar tool to help planners and designers envision creative spatial interventions from the regional to the building scale. Congratulations to Matthew and Anna Gabrielle. Next, the Plimpton Pourvu Design Prize recognizes the top team or individual whose project completed as part of their GSD curriculum best demonstrates feasibility in design and construction and fulfills market and user needs. This year, the prize is being awarded to a team composed of three students spanning three different class years. Ian Groskal, who's graduating today from the Master in Architecture program, Sarah Fayed, who graduated last year from the Master of Landscape Architecture in Urban Design program, and Dixie Wu, who will graduate next year from both the Master in Design Studies and the Master in Architecture programs. So it's a team comprised of three different graduating years and three different programs at the school. Their winning project, Building a Scalable Business in Data Centers, offers a new scalable paradigm with a human-centered approach and prepares for a 5G-driven future while also addressing current growing demand for data centers in urban areas. Located along the Ottawa River in Gatineau to take advantage of the booming tech center in Canada East, the team's project is aimed at benefiting three groups, the tenant, the community, and the investor. Congratulations to Ian, Dixie, and Sarah. Next, the Clifford Wong Prize in Housing Design, which aims to help reestablish the essential role of architects in society, not only to provide the fundamental needs of human shelter, but also to meet the challenge of designing creative solutions for improving living environments. This prize is awarded to a multifamily housing design that incorporates the most interesting ideas and innovations that may lead to socially oriented and more improved living conditions. This year, the prize is being split between two students. Isabel Dunham Strauss, who's graduating today from the Master in Architecture program for her project titled Up From the Past, Housing as Reparations on Chicago's South Side, and Shina Young, who's also graduating today from the Master in Architecture program for her project titled Cripping Architecture. Both of these projects foregrounded critical contemporary issues in urban multifamily housing. They both celebrate an activist approach to design excellence, reflecting the powerful agency of the architect while voicing optimistic modes of engagement for the future. Isabel reimagines the role of architecture and housing in the city offering a platform and method for the architect and the citizen to join in conversation. This project goes beyond activism towards a regenerative horizon that holds the social project together with a discourse on design, beauty, and imagination. Shina's project, which is more specific typologically, focuses on the wheelchair as a way to advance notions of inclusivity. 
China's careful treatment of an often overlooked culture results in a delicate and considerate bottom-up project that's simple, well-resolved, and points towards a new type. Congratulations to Isabel and China. Next, the Peter Rice Prize honors students of exceptional promise in the school's architecture and advanced degree programs who have proven their competence and innovation in advancing architecture and structural engineering. This year, the prize is being awarded to two students who work together as a team. Erin Lindsay Hunt, who's graduating today from the Master in Design Studies program, and Yashwan Leo, who's graduating today from the Master in Architecture program. Erin and Yashwan's award-winning project, titled New Block, revisits the brick, one of humanity's oldest building materials. The team developed and prototyped an innovative formwork system and related computational workflow for mass customizable bricks, which are shaped according to structural principles and designed to create novel, lightweight, rigid shell structures and other architectural elements. Congratulations to Aaron and Yashwan. Next is the Sinclair Kennedy Traveling Fellowships. These comprise a traveling fellowship program that graduate students from all schools at Harvard are eligible to apply for. The awards support a full academic year of research at a destination outside of the United States. And as you might imagine, competition for them is very high, which makes it all the more exciting to announce that Harvard selected two recipients from the GSD for two of the fellowships this year. Brittany Junkiliani, who's graduating today from the Master in Landscape Architecture program, and Sam E. Valentine, who's also graduating today from the Master in Landscape Architecture program. For this fellowship, Brittany will be based in Galicia, Spain, where she will catalog the lives of the Mariscadoras, a community of shellfish harvesting women who illustrating the relationship between humans, water, and coastal ecological management. Sam's fellowship will be based in South America and Africa. He'll focus on the history of the Brazilian Quilombo, a community of escaped enslaved people. He'll be working on drawings that document the African lineages of architecture and community space making. Congratulations to Brittany and to Sam. Next, the Fulbright US Student Program is an international exchange program in the fields of education, culture, and science offering advanced research, study, and teaching opportunities in over 140 countries. We're pleased that this year, a Fulbright grant has been awarded to two of our graduates. Sam E. Valentine, who again is graduating today from the Master in Landscape Architecture program, and Kira Stein, who's graduating today from both the Master in Landscape Architecture and the Master in Urban Planning programs. Sam plans to engage in the exchange of urban design and landscape architectural knowledge between two disparate metropolitan regions of the Americas, Boston and Salvador de Bahia, Brazil. Kira's research will focus on urban forestry as a framework for public life and health in Kosovo, proposing design interventions to address pressing social and environmental needs in the city of Pristina. Congratulations to Sam and Kira. And finally, I'm very pleased to present the inaugural recipients of the GSD's Alumni Award. The Alumni Award honors outstanding leadership by GSD alumni, underscoring that our students don't stop being amazing after they graduate. This new award highlights the essential role that GSD graduates play in leading change around the world. Further, it recognizes and celebrates the diversity, range, and impact of GSD alumni within their communities and across their areas of practice. Three alumni have been selected to receive this inaugural award. Deanna Van Buren, Loeb Fellow of 2013, Jack Dangermond, MLA in 1969, and Everett Fly, who also received his MLA in 1977. Congratulations to Deanna, Jack, and Everett, and congratulations once again to all the recipients of this year's awards. Thank you. So again, congratulations to everyone who received these awards. And now to present the awards given by the Department of Architecture, it's my great pleasure to welcome live from New Los Angeles, Mark Lee, professor in the practice and chair of the Department of Architecture. 
Hey, Mark. Hey, Sarah. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. So you're, you're beaming in from Los Angeles, but you spent your entire semester last semester teaching a studio where you were in LA, you were co-teaching it with Hanif Kara, who's a professor in the practice of architectural technology. Hanif is based in London and you had students in Seoul and Cambridge. Can you tell me how that crazy time zone puzzle worked out? Well, you know, uh, Hanif and I are thrilled and humbled to accept this time zone award, first of all. <laughs> it definitely entailed many early morning and late night Zoom meetings at ungodly hours and many, many barrels of coffee. But at the same time, I think we and others benefited from having multi, multiple virtual visitors and guest speakers from all around the world, which would not have been feasible with, during normal times. I think you did turn it into a, a plus. I'm, I'm really astonished mm -hmm. by it. Um, can you tell me if you have any broad thoughts about the work that you saw this past year? Yeah, I think our faculty is extremely proud by the remarkable body of work accomplished by our students in this difficult year. There were projects that tackled issues of housing, the domestic environment, adaptive reuse, racial and social equality, the future of monuments, provisional structures, and many more uh, pressing issues our world is facing that were dealt with uh, at very advanced levels. Uh, the quality and presentation of the work was so high that made it difficult for the faculty to single out exemplary achievements for acknowledgement. Nevertheless, after a series of long and careful deliberations, a number of awards have been identified. And I'm very pleased to announce the following awards administered by the faculty of the Department of Architecture. First one is the American Institute of Architects Medal, which is awarded to a professional degree student in the Master in Architecture program's graduating class, who has achieved the highest level of excellence in overall scholarship throughout the course of their studies. The AIA Medal of the class of 2020 is being awarded to Hannah Connolly Hoyt. Hannah is an astonishingly intelligent and exceptionally talented designer, and she earned this medal for achieving the highest level of excellence throughout her studies here at the GSD. She has an unwavering belief in doing good work for insight and designs, and is the sort of architect who will always give us, all of us, a better tomorrow. Congratulations, Hannah. The next one is the Alpha Rho Chi Medal, which is awarded to the graduating students who have achieved the best general record of leadership and service to the department, and who gives promise to professional merit through their character. The faculty of the Department of Architecture is pleased to award the Alpha Rho Chi Medal to Kofi Akapo. During his tenure at the GSD, Kofi has distinguished himself as a generous, supportive, and collegial student. He has calmly and judiciously represented the voices of others, and his achievements are complemented by an impressive and original work of his own. The faculty recognize Kofi with the Alpha Rho Chi Medal for his many contributions to the GSD community. Congratulations, Kofi. Next, we have the James Templeton Kelly Prize, which recognizes the best final design project submitted by a graduating student in each of the architecture degree programs. This year, the prize is awarded to two students in the Master in Architecture I program, Shana Young and Calvin Ray Boyd II, as well as Yuming Feng, who is graduating today from the Master in Architecture II program. Shana's thesis project is titled Cripping Architecture, the project inverts an ableist world to create one where wheelchair users are privileged and the able-bodied are accommodated. It takes cues from Neve Brown's Alexandra and Ainsworth estate, but reconceptualizes the linear estate from the inside out as an aggregate of heterogeneous units, terraforming a slice of the city with crypt topographies, horizons, and temporalities. Kelvin's work demonstrates architecture's powerful capacity for protests. His thesis, titled Pair of Dice, Paradise, Paradise, a counter memorial to pr police brutality, bears witness to police br brutality against Black people in America. Calvin calls for an architecture of accountability, a counter memorial where pyramidal lenses puncture police stations across America and aggregate to divide the National Mall into two at the scale of its own monument. The thesis raises complex questions of context, scale, medium, and spectacle, and explores formal dilemmas between absence and presence. His work is a must-see, 
offering reflections toward an architecture of accountability. Yuming's project for the American Brick in Arcadia Studio is an investigation into material transfer between the tectonics of brick and timber construction. The project reconsiders archetypal detailing techniques that are specific to each material, and the final result is a multicultural center that proposes new relations between types and taxonomies and structure and construction opportunities in a way that is authentically contemporary. Congratulations, Shana, Calvin, and Yu Ming. Next is the Julia Omri Appleton Traveling Fellowship that is given to a student in the Department of Architecture on the basis of academic achievement, as well as the worthiness of the project to be undertaken. This year's recipient is Hannah Connolly Hoyt. Hannah is a remarkable designer and an intelligent powerhouse. The faculty look forward to seeing the results of an investigation of social housing through the lens of five themes, design, context, resident experience, common spaces, and adaptation. Hannah has brought a unifying clarity of expression to every architectural project she has tackled at the GSD, and her approach to design is marked by a rare visual freshness and an elegant simplicity of expression. Congratulations again, Hannah. The Kevin Kieran Prize recognizes the highest level of academic achievement among students graduating from the post-professional master in architecture program. This year, we are pleased to award the prize to Arta Perezic. Arta has been awarded this prize for her exceptional design talent, intellectual rigor and creativity, a combination that has yielded immense originality and a unique perspective. With integrity and generosity, Arta elevates architecture discourse by centering humanistic and ecological values to help envision a better future for everyone and for our environment. Congratulations, Arta. Finally, the Department of Architecture Faculty Design Award was established with the aim of recognizing significant achievement within a body of design work completed by a student at the GSD. This award is given to a graduating student from each of the department's two programs. We're pleased to present the Faculty Design Award today to two students graduating from the Master in Architecture I program, Anna Kurtner and Sarah Summin Cheng, and Chunghan Huang, who is graduating today from the Master in Architecture II program. Anna has undertaken a broad range of formal investigations, each with a high degree of resolution that is evidenced in successive semesters of her design work completed at the GSD, including her thesis project. Most striking is Anna's consistent pursuit of new conceptual geometric and technical territory with each architectural proposal. Sarah is a gifted and courageous designer aiming to give form to complex social cultural conditions. Combining sharp instincts and a nimble intellect, she demonstrates a refined design sensibility. Regardless of the challenge, Sarah personifies the type of attitude that every architect seeks and cherishes for themselves, a joyful dedication to architecture. Chung Han has achieved a consistently high level of excellence across a remarkably broad range of design concerns. The versatility of his design work is commendable for how it cuts across issues of architecture tradition, building technology, design syntax, and visual computing with both confidence and inspiration. Congratulations, Anna, Sarah, and Chung Han, and to all of the recipients of this year's award. Thank you, Mark, and congratulations to all those architecture students who received those awards. To present the awards given by the Department of Landscape Architecture, it's my immense pleasure to welcome Anita Beresbietia, Professor of Landscape Architecture and Chair of the Department of Landscape Architecture. Hi, Anita. Hi, Sarah. It's so good to see you. Uh, I wanted to ask you, because I've been so impressed this year by what the landscape program has done regarding climate change. It's really come out of the blocks despite the pandemic, despite everything, with a lot of curricular changes. And I wondered if you could just tell us about those in a few moments. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, indeed, one of the highlights of the year was our new Climate by Design class, led by Professor Jill Dissemini and taught by design and ecology faculty and, ex and many expert guests. The class explored the interface between climate change, 
climate science, ecology, policy and design, and it speculated on how design itself will change its methods and scope to engage the scales and complexity of climate change. Faculty and students contributed to a global atlas of climate change and started an archive of 100 case studies for future reference. But more broadly, by now, climate change has permeated our entire curriculum, from the design of microclimates for comfort in streets and public spaces, to designing transitions in regions and cities under large-scale environmental, po environmental population and economic change. So the idea of transition as a design project itself has been very exciting and the students have done excellent work balancing the need for specificity and concept with the necessary orchestration of change across different temporal and material scales. And now I am very pleased to announce the awards administered by the faculty of the Department of Landscape Architecture. First is the Landscape Architecture Thesis Prize, which is given to the graduating student who has prepared the best independent thesis during the past academic year. This year, the Thesis Prize is being awarded to two students, Gracie Villa and Joanne Lee. Gracie's thesis, City Forest, Reordering Plant-Human Relationships Towards Healthy Cities, speculates on the transformation of our urban streets and corridors from abiotic functional systems to places of radical biotic interdependence, a condition that alters plant and human relationships in the city, where nature and culture coexist in solidarity. Joanne is an original thinker seeking to design landscapes rooted in scientific knowledge and aspiring to provoke deep aesthetic experiences. She's open-minded and curious, yet persevering and tenacious in her search. Above all, however, she pursues her work with a perfect balance of weightiness and optimism. Congratulations to Joanne and Gracie. Next are the American Society of Landscape Architecture Awards for which the department nominates students each year. This year, the faculty are pleased to present the ASLA Certificate of Merit to two students, Shira Grossman, who is graduating today from the Master of Design Studies program in addition to the Master in Landscape Architecture program, and Maxwell Nathan Smith Holmes. Shira quietly dismantles norms and creates powerful visions of a more just world, all with a clear commitment to inquiry armed with a strong research skills and a designer's imagination. As co-chair of the student group Women in Design, she leaves the GSD a better place for all. Max demonstrates unbridled inquisitiveness and passion for his chosen field. In his studio and thesis work, he has combined a great command of design precedent and rigorous inquiry with a compulsion for futuristic visions. There is no end to his intellectual curiosity and no limit to his fearless hunt for a healthy and speculative landscape future. We are also very pleased that this year the ASLA Certificate of Honor is being awarded to two students, Kira Bree Klingen, who is graduating from the Master in Design Studies program in addition to the Master in Landscape Architecture program, and Kobe Moreno. Kira is a thoughtful, reflective, and creative designer of and in the landscape. In the Delta flood-prone city of Bangkok, Thailand, for instance, Kira tackled the infrastructure of canals and waterways to create a new system of public and equitable landscapes that are deeply embedded in the lives of local farmers and city inhabitants. Her project showed a deep respect for and sensitivity to the landscapes, its inhabitants, and the social and food economies that comprise life in this city on a river. Kobe is an excellent designer with an astounding blend of technical and analytical skills. He's passionate about pushing boundaries with his ability to think through, make, and articulate complex projects. But above all, 
He has a wonderful attitude and capacity to excite others about design potential to confront these new territories. Congratulations, Max, Shira, Kobe, and Kira. Up next is the Landscape Architecture Foundation Olmsted Scholars Program. Each year, the faculty in the department nominates a student for this program, which recognizes and supports students with exceptional leadership potential. This year, the faculty is pleased to award the title of Landscape Architecture Foundation Olmsted Scholar to Jalene Esther May McPherson. Jalene is tenacious, unafraid to speak her mind, and to speak up for causes and issues of critical social and professional import. Jalene's student leadership, and as co-author of the Notes on Credibility, provoked important dialogue across the school and the design disciplines. The collective work delivered some tough messages and did so in a way that paired critique with productive dialogue and clear suggestions and actions. Congratulations, Jolene. Next is the Norman T. Newton Prize, which is given to a graduating landscape architecture student whose work best exemplifies achievement in design expression as realized in any medium. This year, the prize is awarded to Brittany Juncliani. Brittany is a truly original designer, maker, and thinker. With a foundation in feminist theory and community activism, she explores the political agency of representation in design. Her work is inspiring and her energy infectious. She's a natural leader and as generous a classmate as she is a designer. Congratulations, Brittany. Up next is the Peter Walker and Partners Fellowship for Landscape Architecture. This fellowship is awarded to support travel and study for a graduating GSD student to advance their understanding of the body of scholarship and practices related to landscape architecture. This year, we are pleased to award the fellowship to two students, Jenna Morgus and Dominic Baitu Riolo. Jenna came to the GSD after several years in professional practice. As a student, she has used her time at the GSD to broaden and deepen her knowledge about topics that are urgent to the field of landscape architecture. By exploring the complex interrelationships between climate change, urbanization, and habitation, Jenna has devoted herself to advancing ways of thinking and modes of representation that position her for a renewed engagement with the discipline. Dominic's project at the GSD has been focused on challenging and expanding the canons of landscape architecture through his background in arts and sciences. A truly remarkable and generous student, it has been his intellectual honesty that, coupled with an interest in design expression, has set him apart. Congratulations, Jenna and Dominic. Next is the Jacob Wiedemann Prize, which is awarded to the student of the most distinguished design achievement graduating from the Department of Landscape Architecture. This year's prize is awarded to Alison Irwin Wright, who is graduating today from the Master in Urban Planning Program in addition to the Master in Landscape Architecture Program. Allison is a talented designer, a thoughtful planner, a committed researcher, a dedicated teacher, and a valued member of the GSD community. She stands out for her consistent design excellence and for her quiet yet forceful pursuit of meaningful transformation. She works seamlessly across all mediums and scales of design and in ways that are thoroughly extraordinary. Congratulations, Allison. Next, the Sila Fountain Scholar Program is an endowed annual award in recognition and support of black, indigenous, and students of color in landscape architecture with exceptional design skills and who use their skills and ideas to influence, communicate, lead, and advance design solutions for contemporary issues in a matter aligned with the original goals of Dr. Charles Fountain the founder of the first accredited landscape architecture program at a historically black college or university. 
This year, the prize is awarded to Jolene Esther May McPherson. Jolene is profoundly and intensely engaged in landscape architecture's potential to bring radical change to society. And at the same time, she is determined to change the inequalities within the field of landscape architecture. Congratulations, Jolene. And finally, the Charles Elliott Traveling Fellowship is awarded annually as the highest honor by the Department of Landscape Architecture to one of its graduates. This year, the fellowship is being awarded to Chiara Stein, who is graduating today from a Master in Urban Planning program in addition to the Master in Landscape Architecture program. Chiara is a brilliant researcher, designer, and planner with an extraordinary commitment to issues of environmental and social justice. She's a humble, dedicated, and thoughtful advocate who asks tough questions, listens carefully to others, and acts with utmost responsiveness. She's a clear leader with a passion for equitable transformation of the built environment. Congratulations to Chiara and to all of the recipients of this year's awards. Thank you. Thank you, Anita, and congratulations to the landscape architecture students who received these awards. Incredible work. And now it's my pleasure to present the awards given by the Department of Urban, or to introduce the person presenting the awards given by the Department of Urban Planning and Design, Rahul Mayotra, John T. Dunlop, Professor in Housing and Urbanization, Chair of the Department of Urban Planning and Design, joining us live from Brookline, Massachusetts. Rahul, it's a delight to see you. Hi, Sarah. It's lovely to see you. I wish I was at Gun Hall with you all. So do I, but you have had a terrible accident this semester, and um, despite that, you've been leading the department, despite having broken ribs, a shattered clavicle, and I have to say, you look fabulous, um, but I'm glad that you are actually continuing doing this from home. No, thanks very much, and I, I feel better. Thanks for asking, and, and you know, I mean, all the good wishes I've received from all of you have given me a lot of strength, so thank you all for, for that, yes. I, I appreciate that. I'm so glad to see you. So Rahul, this year we've heard a lot of people say that with the pandemic, cities are over. Um, we should be all be fleeing cities. They're places of danger. And I wondered, I mean, you're the Department of Urban Planning and Design. Um, how did your department react to all of that? Well, I mean, I think the question you pose has been a challenging one. And, uh, you know, the pandemic has made people react to cities. Uh, people have often confused density with overcrowding, uh, you know, and all of that. But I think what it's forced to do is it's, it's, it's forcing us to, um, you know, think about cities in more nuanced ways. Uh, I think the students and faculty have been sort of also moving their gaze away uh, from mega cities to look at smaller towns, to look at what these ecologies might mean and how these ecologies of settlements can become uh, perhaps more robust. Uh, but also it points to, I think, what we were talking about just a few minutes ago about housing and its relevance, because this also forces us to think about housing differently, how communities are formed and how design imagination, planning and urban design uh, can be brought to it from the dimensions of public health, equity, you know, many other things. So essentially, I think, uh, you know, we are really impressed with how the students have dealt with these questions, have asked these questions. And I feel that, uh, you know, they've engaged with all of this in difficult times. And I think this, this is something that's going to stay with them and prepare them even better uh, as they face this new changing world that they're going to, uh, to confront. And I think it makes us all very proud. Everyone in the department is extremely proud of what the students have done and the way they've dealt with, you know, what you've asked is a very complicated question. So that's that. And now I'm pleased to announce the awards administered by the faculty of the Department of Urban Planning and Design. First is the award for academic excellence in urban planning and urban design which honors graduating students in those programs who've achieved the highest academic record 
This year, the award is being given to Anna Carlson in urban planning and Alha Badar in urban design. A joint degree student in urban planning and law, Anna Carlson has demonstrated a strong commitment to housing and community development at the GSD while working as a student advocate in the Harvard Law School Tenant Advocacy Project. Halia Bader has displayed an incredible consistency in her engagement with a range of issues, subject areas, and disciplinary concerns in the urban design program. Halia's interest in understanding and engaging a range of geographies as she focused on her studies will serve her well in the future as an urban designer. Congratulations, Anna and Halia. Next is the Award for Outstanding Leadership in Urban Planning and Urban Design, which honors graduating students from each of those programs who have demonstrated outstanding leadership during their time at the Graduate School of Design. This year's recipients are Kyle Miller in Urban Planning and Halia Bader in Urban Design. Kyle has been steadfast in his commitment to service through his leadership within student-led organizations, research labs, and teaching assistant positions. His consistency of character, cultivation of relationships, extreme efficiency and productivity, and demand for justice and equality have made an indelible impact on the culture of the program. Over the two years of her studies, Halia Bader has contributed to the program in substantial ways that have engaged both the students as well as faculty. She has contributed to the process of transitioning the core and option studios online, and most importantly, demonstrated leadership in facilitating the virtual entry of the class of 2022 to the GSD. Her interest in thinking critically about pedagogy and practice will clearly put her in leadership roles in the years to come. Congratulations, Kyle and Halia. Next is the Department of Urban Planning and Design Thesis Prize, which is given to the graduating students in each of the programs who've prepared the best independent thesis during the past academic year. This year, the thesis prize is being awarded to Mary Louise Chatters Taylor in Urban Planning and Adam Mickeys in Urban Design. Mary's thesis offers a new approach to health spatial social diagnosis by mapping trauma-informed restorative justice theory and relational cultural therapy over the pattern languages of urban space. Her thesis also contributes to legitimizing the urgency of mental health as a consequence of design spatial conditions, and it offers a way to introduce the practice of empathy into curricular and pedagogical reform. Adam's trajectory and pursuit of his thesis was exemplary. His work was admirable and his results were noteworthy, at times visually arresting and original. He wove together a range of threads from software techniques and algorithm design approaches through sketches, models, and scores to applications in FIGBIS design and construction. Congratulations, Mary and Adam. Next is the Award for Excellence in Project-Based Urban Planning, which is given to students who have demonstrated exceptional ability in urban planning projects, including research and design studios throughout their course of study. This year, it is being awarded to Anne Lin. A joint degree student in urban planning and public health, Anne Lin deliberately prioritized project-based courses that emphasized work for and with those living on the margins, emphasizing how planning and design can support healing and reparative community development. Congratulations, Anne. Next is the Award for Excellence in Urban Design, which is given to students who have demonstrated exceptional design ability throughout their course of study in the urban design program. This year, it is being awarded to Christopher D'Amico, Christopher consistently demonstrated innovative approaches to his work throughout his studies, particularly in the context of the broad range of design studios he was involved in during his time at the school. He also displayed an unusual and excellent capacity to represent this work in an exciting and compelling manner. Congratulations, Christopher. Next is the American Institute of Certified Planners 
Outstanding Student Award, which recognizes outstanding attainment in the study of planning by students graduating from accredited planning programs. The recipient of the award is chosen by a jury of planning faculty at each school. For the class of 2021, the AICP Outstanding Student Award is presented to Stephen Wan Gu. Stephen Gu has demonstrated strong academic achievement, exemplary leadership, and a collaborative spirit for students and faculty inside and outside the classroom. One example cited by students has been his role as a teaching assistant, where he was a reassuring anchor to students scattered around the world during this time of remote education. Congratulations, Stephen. Now I'm pleased to announce two prizes for which all GST students are eligible. First, the Fernand Colorado Mansfield Prize for Superior Achievement in Real Estate Studies is awarded annually to a graduating student from any program who has exhibited superior academic accomplishment and leadership in real estate studies. This year, the prize is being awarded to three students. Jia Hasina Azad, who is graduating today with her master's in urban planning. Julian Martin Huritas, who is also graduating with his master's in urban planning. And George Zhang, who is graduating today with his master's in architecture. In her concentration in real estate and the built environment in the master in urban planning program, Jia Azad explored how real estate could foster well-being and community development. She actively helped build the real estate community as co-editor-in-chief of the Urban Re Review and by participating in student governance. As a graduating student in the Master in Urban Planning program, Julian has served on the Alumni Committee for Urban Planning and the Admissions Review Committee. He helped create the new Developers Initiative Program for Mass Development and was part of a team that placed third in the National APA Student Competition while all doing exemplary work as a research assistant in real estate. As a graduating student from the Master in Architecture Program, George led the Real Estate Development Club, co-chaired the Real Estate Conference in 2019, and served as editor-in-chief of the Real Estate Review all while leading treks for students and organizing guest speakers. His design work has been published in platform and exhibited at the school. And in midst of all of this, he found time to be an outstanding research assistant in real estate. Congratulations, Jair, Julian, and George. And finally, established in 1986, the Drucker Traveling Fellowship is open to all students of the GST who demonstrate excellence in the design of urban environments. It offers students the opportunity to travel in the United States or abroad to pursue studies that advances understanding of urban design. This year, the faculty has awarded the fellowship to Sam Naylor, who is graduating today with his master's in architecture and urban design. Sam proposes a very challenging research project, overcoming the common dichotomy between social and market housing by exploring a third way with other forms of collective housing that involve sharing land and distributing equity. He will explore historical utopian examples, but also current practices in four geographical contexts, searching for architectural innovations and new social ambitions. Ultimately, he seeks to understand where the design of these projects has shaped or has been shaped by their non-exclusive right over property. This exciting itinerary will culminate with the GST symposium where Sam will share his research with the Boston community. Congratulations, Sam, and to all of the students who received this year's awards. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul, and congratulations to the students of both the urban planning and urban design programs who received these awards. To present the awards given by the Master in Design Studies program, it's my great pleasure to welcome K. Michael Hayes, Elliot Noyes Professor of Architectural Theory and Director of the Master of Design Studies program. Hey, Michael. Hey, Sarah. It's been such fun being in Gunn these past days. 
with our dear colleagues, a few of them. I'm not sure the students understand uh, that we actually had to rehearse all this. So it's been really fun to, to be here. Yeah, this is our third round and we're still probably gonna make mistakes. So it goes. So during the pandemic, I admit that I did find one perk, which was that I was able to cook during days of schoolwork, um, which is something I enjoyed doing. I didn't get into the sourdough craze, but I did bake bread. I wanna know what your pandemic perk was. Well, as you know, Martha and I were on uh, Cape Cod. We, we went right at spring break and, and stayed there the whole year. Um, and I have come to absolutely love uh, uh, learning about and working with native plant material. Uh, within a month when we got there, we started a perennial garden. Um, so it's coming back for its second year. And just in the past uh, month, I've planted dozens of shrubs and, and trees. The Cape has a kind of scruffiness uh, to its landscape because of the salt air that I've, it, it first looks paltry, but I've really grown to love it. I think, I think we're going to watch out for your application to the landscape architecture program yeah, I, at some I point. Still so. yeah, I still have yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. So tell me, you've, you've, this has been your first year as the director of the MDES program. That's such a diverse program. Can you capture it in a couple words? Well, I, I think it's important that the audience understands that the MDES program is, is the only program that goes across all three departments, and it's supported by all three departments at the GSD. So there is, there's, a, there's a wealth of areas of knowledge and practice in the MDES program. It, it includes technologies of computation, uh, fabrication, and energy. On the other hand, we have uh, histories and theories of design uh, uh, and media, of conservation, um, as well as actual practices of activist practices of public design and media, activist practices of, of critical conservation. Um, we study ecological analyses of social and, and climate risk and mitigation in, in both cities and territories. And then of course there's the real estate program which has a particular emphasis on design and the quality of the environment. So the work this year across those areas have been so exciting and, and excellent and I'm really uh, pleased now to announce the awards administered by the faculty of the Master in Design Studies program. First is the Demetrius Picionis Award, which recognizes a student for outstanding academic performance in the Master in Design Studies program. This year, the award is being given to Emma Grace Lewis. In the cacophony of the GSD, Emma stands out for her quiet but firm direction, centered in the value of every person. This has led her to bring deep cultural knowledge to issues of conflict resolution. Her ability to create imageable narratives on unexpected topics hints at a remarkable future. Congratulations, Emma. Next, the Daniel L. Shodok Award for Technology and Sustainability honors the memory and legacy of Professor Daniel Shodok and the standards of excellence he established during his 40 years of teaching and mentoring at the GSD. The award is given annually in recognition of the best Master of Design Studies thesis in the area of technology and sustainable design. This year, the prize is being awarded to two students. First, a student whose thesis title is Controlling Wind Pressure Around Building by Multiple Ventilation Louver for Higher Natural Ventilation Potential, Sung Hwan Lim is an excellent student and researcher, unafraid of diving headfirst into unfamiliar technical material, extremely generous with his time, and may also be the only person at the GSD who has actually mastered Zoom. His thesis was innovative and also plausible. It shows promise for a future of sustainable buildings. Next is Jun Hong Lee, whose thesis is titled Spherical Deployable Shield for Robot Arm. The thesis exemplifies the inventor's impulse to bring unrealized possibilities to life, whether scripting a design app for origami-inspired robots or assembling a mechanical sphere made of retractable 3D printed petals. He makes everything look easy. 
Yet he's far more than a technologist. His instinct for what is elegant and surprising shines through all his designs. Next, the Design Studies Thesis Prize, which is given annually to the best thesis by a Master in Design Studies student. This year, the prize has been awarded to two students, Juan David Grisales and Proi Liao. Juan David's ambitious study, From Humboldt to Caldas, Environmental Liberations Through Tropical Altitudes, reclaims the underexplored figure of the 19th century naturalist and inventor Francisco José Caldas and his influence on Alexander von Humboldt. It confirms the relevance of the altitudinal conception of the tropical Andes as a key to understanding current global environmental changes. Proe's thesis is entitled An Attempt to Approach a Void, Georges Perec, Cause Commune, and the Infraordinary. Georges Perec was a French novelist and linguistic acrobat who wrote beautifully about aspects of space. Proe Liao is the author of a high-flying yet thoroughly grounded thesis on Perec's work. Her work is a stylistic tour de force in terms of its written composition, visual presentation, and historical analysis. Congratulations to Juan David and Proe. Finally, the Outstanding Leadership in Real Estate Award is given to a student in the Master in Design Studies program in the area of real estate and the built environment for leadership in advancing innovative thinking and extending the reach and impact of the academic program to real estate practice. This year, the award is being given to Jan Joseph Wojtovich. Jan combines high academic achievement with seasoned design sensibility and good citizenship. When he's not doing exemplary coursework, which he has demonstrated in numerous classes, both in real estate core and outside of it, he's been organizing student treks and representing his fellow students at Student Forum. Congratulations to Jan and to all the students who received this year's awards. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And congratulations to the MDES students who received these awards. To present the awards given by the Master in Design Engineering program, it's my great pleasure to welcome Martin Bechtold, Kumagai Professor of Architectural Technology and co-director of the Master in Design Engineering program. Hey, Martin. Hey, Sarah. Nice to see you. I will say I'm very impressed with your academic outfit. I'm just offering my school uniform, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yes, but it's quite sharp, and I think probably not something you wore much during Zoom. So, <laughs> so Martin, the, the MDE program, which I find a really fascinating program, has a theme every year, and I was really struck that you all picked um, about the most appropriate theme you could this year. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, happy to. So we actually pivoted about a year ago we decided to take on the theme of telepresence. And that theme provides essentially a kind of context for the MDE studio that guides the work of faculty and students. Now, telepresence clearly dealt with the challenges of the moment. We're all remote in some way. And the students really responded extremely in a very, very impressive way, uh, turning essentially this challenge into an opportunity for innovation for tomorrow. They worked in areas such as learning, health or community and personal empowerment. Uh, I, I'm sure that a lot of their work is going to be incredibly important to all of us as we move forward with telepresence being part of our normal world. Can you say a few words about the final projects that uh, the, the students in the second year did as their IDEP projects? Sure. So just for those of you who don't know, the MDE program teaches the methods and strategies to understand and solve real world societal dilemmas. And clearly, there's never a shortage of these problems. This year, I say we faced with a, with a real avalanche of really pressing problems. And, and the, the students really responded extremely well. Uh, they, they pursued creative, rigorous, and very determined work. Uh, and so faculty and staff, we were very, very impressed with the work. And at the same time, the students managed to not let the, com the, the community collective aspects of the program dwindle. I believe many of the program, the projects will continue 
after the completion of the program for these students. So uh, that being said, I'm now very pleased to announce the awards administered by the faculty of the Master in Design Engineering program. First is the Overall Academic Performance Award, which recognizes a graduating MDE student for outstanding academic performance in the Master in Design Engineering degree program. This year, the award is being given to Sarah Kovar. Throughout her time in the MDE program, Sarah has shown remarkable and consistent academic achievement, whether in studio, in our integrated frameworks course, or for her independent design engineering project. Her accomplishments are even more remarkable as she stepped well beyond her comfort zone into data science, media technology, and AI. Congratulations, Sarah. Next is the Leadership and Community Prize, which recognizes a graduating student who has displayed outstanding leadership and community building within the design engineering cohort and who has represented MDE values to the world beyond. This year, the prize is being awarded to Kate Tompkins. Kate has consistently supported fellow students with warmth and generosity. Whether in her capacity as a student rep or as a teaching fellow in studio, she was sure to proactively reach out, advocate respectfully, and collaborate. Importantly, her engagement extended well beyond the formal positions to the many informal interactions so fundamental to the MDE experience. Congratulations, Kate. And finally, the Outstanding Design Engineering Project Award honors one or more MDE students who have presented the design engineering project that contributes in the most compelling way to understanding and addressing a complex societal problem. This year, the award is being given to two students, Ed Bayes and Sarah Kovar. Ed and Sarah set themselves a challenge in tackling financial hardship for their second year project a project that addresses human behavior, the banking system, regulations, and leverages AI and technical know-how in building a novel digital platform. The result is called Yonder. Yonder is a tool that emerged through many iterations involving a rich array of stakeholders, a tool that holds the promise of a pending entrenched financial systems. Congratulations, Ed and Sarah, and to all of the students who received this year's awards. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, and congratulations to the MDE students who received these awards. I love how the award ceremony gives you such a snapshot of these different characters, the different students across here, and, and you see their personalities as well as the achievements of their amazing work. So this concludes the awards portion of the program. Let us take a moment to congratulate again all of those graduating students for their out outstanding achievements. So I'll be the first to clap. And at this time, I have the great pleasure of introducing the Tamika Reed Quartet, featuring Jason Ribka, Tomas Fujiwara, and Mary Halverson. This quartet performs original compositions by the remarkable cellist Tamika Reed. Over the last decade, Tamika has emerged as one of the most original and versatile musicians in Chicago's jazz and improvised music community. This past year, she was also awarded a US Artist Fellowship for which I'd like to congratulate her on behalf of the entire school. Mary Halverson is one of the most recognized, recognized guitarists of her generation and has earned many accolades, including a MacArthur Fellowship. And Tomas Fujiwara is one of the most sought after drummers on the New York music scene. He leads and co-leads several dynamic ensembles. Bassist Jason Rebke is also a band leader in his own right, earning praise for this de his debut recording of his octet. Please join me in welcoming the Tomeka Reed Quartet. Congratulations, class of 2021.
Mary Halverson, Jason Repke, Tomo Fujiwara, Timmy Curry. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Tomika, Mary, Toma, and Jason for that beautiful piece. We're really fortunate that you could join us in celebrating our graduates with us here today. We'll have the pleasure of hearing one more piece by the Tomika Reed Quartet a little later in this program. And now I'm really excited that we've arrived at this year's Class Day Address, which will be presented by writer and editor Gia Tolentino. In preparing for my introduction of Gia, I tried to remember when I first got to know her. I heard about her long before I met her, but not through the channels that you might imagine. Gia's partner, Andrew, was my student years ago, almost a decade ago, I realized, with some shock at the passing of time. He's now a senior associate at Shop Architects in New York, and he remains a close friend. So I, I learned of and finally met Gia through Andrew, and have watched both of their careers take shape, take off, really, since that point. I first admired Gia for the way that she grounded her partner, patiently enduring our world of design school and all that it entails. And then I started reading her, first on Jezebel, listened to her on various podcasts. I highly recommend the long form podcast episode 183. And I started reading her in The New Yorker when she became a staff writer there in 2016. Gia's writing is smart, sharp, original, and thought provoking. In the introduction to her book of essays, Trick Mirror, which she published in 2019, Gia writes, it was worthwhile, I told myself, just trying to see clearly, even if it took me years to understand what it was I was trying to see. I'm really thrilled that Gia has joined us here today to talk about seeing, to talk about understanding, to talk about the messiness of our lives that often stands in for tidy conclusions. Hi, Gia. It's great to see you. I take it from your background that you're in upstate New York, and I'm wondering if we're going to get a glimpse of baby Paloma or, or Andrew. So I'm not oh. <laughs> hearing Gia's audio. There we go. Now all of a sudden, okay. I am in beautiful upstate New York, but I have sent the baby and Andrew out of the house for this portion of the day. <laughs> it's so good to see you. That's so respectful. That's so respectful of our, our ceremony. I would have loved to hear a, a crying baby just to get well, you a might of her life. Yet. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you very much for agreeing to be our Class Day speaker. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I turn the mic over to you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Well, hello, everyone. And congratulations to all of you for making it to this moment, which, like life itself, is strange and thrilling and unrepeatable, even as it continually dissolves in the texture of the ordinary. I hope that all of you find time today to encapsulate your instincts in a form that you'll be able to revisit later. And I hope you feel particularly aware of your untested potential and that this feeling returns to you and you to it over and over, both in your life and in your work. And also I'm, I'm really thankful to Sarah and to the Harvard Graduate School of Design for inviting me to speak to you, though I feel that there is a not insignificant possibility that me being here right now is a joke that someone is playing on all of us. 
I have to disclose to you that my awareness of built space is under certain circumstances completely non-existent. And that honestly, the only creative and critical practice that I understand is writing. And these days I hardly feel that I understand anything about it. As Sarah mentioned, my boyfriend is an architect. Uh, fortunately for me, because otherwise I'd be living in a nest of clothes and books on the floor, probably. And on the very rare occasions that I have, you know, ventured a glance at a drawing set that falls out of his backpack, I turn into the math lady meme, you know, like troubled by an influx of disturbing questions such as what are ceilings made out of? Which is to say, I admire so much the way that your work is concrete and actual where mine consists of letters that you scroll past on your way to your email. And I'll admit to you up front that I have absolutely nothing to offer you in terms of traditional insight about design. But of course, this is not a typical year. It has not been a typical year. This is round two of virtual commencement. We might as well take a moment to collectively acknowledge what the months since March of 2020 have contained. About 3 million people have died in this pandemic around the world and COVID is still ravaging India and other countries as we speak. Over half, Amer over half a million Americans have died with a death toll five times higher in black and Latinx communities. One in seven people in America has been hungry. Almost 3 million women have had to leave the workforce, a disproportionate share of them women of color. School and work and caregiving were upended, set at odds, made impossible patchwork back together by extraordinary effort. The existential porousness that makes us human was reconfigured as a source of possibly fatal danger. We were separated from our families. We zoomed from our closets and got cut off after 40 minutes. Many of you, if not all of you, have had an entirely different experience of graduate school than you had hoped for or maybe expected and are wondering now how to recreate and reform the camaraderie and connection that you want and you need. We are all still readjusting after this long, long stretch in which so much was incommunicable and unwitnessed, so much joy and struggle and pain. But because of this, we began to see differently. The structures that determine the texture of everyday life became that much more visible. The criminal inequality in this country became even clearer as the population was divided into those who can work from home and those who would serve them wearing a face mask. The late anthropologist and activist David Graeber's axiom that the greater social value produced by a job, the less a person is likely to be paid for doing it, took on a new meaning. And on many weeks, it felt like there was nothing to do but to bear witness to George Floyd's murder a year ago, to the armed mob storming the Capitol, to Asian elders being attacked on the streets. The way we live often seems fixed in place by inertia, by obligation, by convention, by the heavy pressure of incentive. But nearly overnight, 15 months ago, we began doing things that we never thought we would, never thought that we could stand to. In last year's protest summer, revolutionary change seemed not just necessary, but possible, with one in five Americans in the streets more than ever for a protest movement in this country. And so, I hope that the past year, the high stakes, the forced reset, the holding pattern, and now the slow release, I hope that it's freed you as much as it's jarred you. I hope that it's jarred you into a new state of freedom, an ability to let go of things that no longer interest you and to feel your way along new directions towards an understanding that there is no time to waste in service of the wrong ideas in the hopes of one day being able to serve the right ones. This year has reiterated in both good and awful ways that the unthinkable is possible. It has been an exercise in sustained uncertainty and an exercise in seeing beyond. And those are the two ways I want to encourage you to consider your own process as a designer, as well as a person living in this unsteady world. It's taken me a long time to really understand and embrace the necessity of uncertainty, which can often feel like aimlessness or being adrift or being lost. I remember the last time I attended a commencement, it was my college, it was my college graduation in 2009. And the, re the recession had made me quite certain that gainful employment outside the food and beverage industry was well beyond my purview. I didn't know any professional writers, and I did not feel entitled to the aspiration to become one myself. 
I wasn't sure what to do. And I eventually joined the Peace Corps and I went off to Kyrgyzstan and Central Asia to teach, to teach English, thinking that this would at least give me some sense of worthwhile purpose. And there, as it turned out, I felt less worthwhile, less purposeful than I ever had in my entire life. Every day I felt and was absolutely inadequate. I was living in the chasm between motive and outcome, between design and result. I was coming to understand the way that good intentions often reify hierarchies and disguise exploitative structures. I became aware in a real sense of my absolute tininess within history against the backdrop of policy. I spent much of my time in country confused and lonely, feeling both powerless and also too powerful, unworthy of the global socioeconomic privilege that I felt that I was wearing like a crown. I was always in trouble and I was not proving to be essential to anyone. I eventually left early, re-entering the States bewildered, disappointed in myself, feeling that that had been my chance to be useful and that I had completely blown it and that I would thus never be able to do anything with any social value in this world. In retrospect, this was the most genuinely generative experience of my life. In some ways, the feeling that I had when I came back from the Peace Corps was similar to the feeling that I have now emerging from the pandemic year, horrified by the way of living that was configured as normal in America and also beset by a loaded, complicated, longing to return to aspects of that life. Back then, I remember I would walk into a grocery store and I would cry, so overwhelmed, so thankful, so nauseated at the fact of being able to purchase any kind of fruit or vegetable I could imagine, any number of products flown across the world to satisfy my passing whims. I could see things that I hadn't been able to see before, see what was desirable for reasons I could stand behind and what was desirable for reasons I couldn't at all. I began to understand that there was a kind of clarity that only comes from failure and dissatisfaction. I was oriented towards a particular reaction of simultaneous dread and desire that eventually became my critical foundation. I was able to identify the vectors that would define my subsequent intellectual and professional and political journey, one that I hope continues to change me as long as I can think. I couldn't have found this without opening myself up to uncertainty, to the unknown and the unexpected, and consequently to failure. I had to let an experience unmake me in order to access something intrinsic. And so here we are, probably having all been unmade in some way recently. We have this moment right now where the signs have been blown down and the old maps aren't working. We've had time to stop and ask ourselves and each other, if we had a chance to remake the systems around us, how would we do it? And what can we do in service of this alternative vision, not one day in the future, but where we are right now? What I'm really talking about is the necessity of cultivating negative capability. If you haven't heard this term before, I will clarify that it does not mean the capability of being negative, which I think we can all agree that our brains have figured out just fine on their own. Negative capability, which in actuality denotes one of the most constructive things a person could cultivate, is a term coined by the 19th century English poet, John Keats, who used it to describe the ability to dwell in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, as he, put, as he puts it without any irritable reaching after fact or reason. This importantly doesn't mean the rejection of fact or reason. It means the suspension of the need for a fixed explanation or a satisfying conclusion. Negative capability is the capacity to stop thinking of the unknown as something to eradicate and begin conceiving it as the source of what we're after with the understanding that our potential both individually and collectively lies in what we don't yet know or see. The Harvard Law professor Roberto Unger draws on negative capability for his theory of false necessity, which is essentially an argument that the structures we think are fixed are actually plastic, that everything has been made, which means it can be remade. We've seen a glimpse of this over the past year, maybe a bigger glimpse than has been possible in a long time. To give just one overarching example, we can, we've seen that we can change nearly everything about our collective daily existence to protect the public good. Unger writes that we can understand ourselves and our history, 
without imagining ourselves to be the object of a law giving fate. We can recognize the shaping power of what we ordinarily take for granted, the deep structures of institution and belief established in the societies to which we, to which we belong. But then he adds, we can also rebel against the worlds we have built and we can interrupt our rebellions and settle down for a while in one of these words, worlds. We can explain what has happened and what might happen, giving due weight to the reality of constraints on the transformative will without either diminishing our explanatory ambition or surrendering to the illusion of false necessity. He writes, and this is an important part, precisely because we are not fully contained in the social worlds we make, precisely because there is always more in us than there is in them, we can see a little bit beyond them, thinking the thoughts and doing the deeds that they do not countenance. This is what it means to cultivate negative capability. And it's a process I think that's incumbent upon us as people, incumbent on me as a writer and incumbent on you as designers to grasp the world as it is, not to work more smoothly within it, but to test its edges to understand that it can be changed, to understand that none of it was inevitable and none of it is final, that there's always more in us and the people around us than what is recognized or suggested, that is what is recognized or suggested. And that the choices we're told matter most are often distractions from the fact that it's the things that are not presented to us as choices that we need to understand as such if they're ever to be changed. In a way, this is common sense, and you already all understand it. We are all in the business of imagining and moving towards what doesn't yet exist. But it's the work of a lifetime to remember that we should always be pushing against our known horizons. As Unger writes, we have to reach beyond the world as it's given to us. And to do this requires daily, constant humility and openness and pliability. It requires us to be aware of what, what we or others might consider marginal or irrelevant. It requires us to carve out possibility by denying the inevitability of what's given to us. Our professions and our world, which is increasingly driven by social networks that demand constant quantifiable reactions of alignment or opposition, applause or rejection, the world can often configure uncertainty as paralyzing or undesirable or inadmissible. But to cultivate negative capability means seeing uncertainty as desirable and sustainable and always built in. So what gets in the way of this approach? Sometimes I think an inability to admit failure does. Either our failures or the failure in our context. The artist Agnes Martin once said that feeling insufficient is the natural state of mind of the artist, that a sense of disappointment and defeat is the essential state of mind for creative work. I'm sure we're all quite familiar with this particular truth as it manifests in all of our individual emotional lives. But it's our task maybe to not try to cover this up in ourselves or recoil from it in each other. And maybe to understand failure as always a beginning, never an ending, a state that we can't escape entirely and should never expect to. I wonder if we can think of our world in the same way, our institutions and our systems to understand disappointment as the natural state of mind of contemporary living, given these levels of inequality, this ecological destruction, this country's foundation of genocidal racism, the violence of capitalism and what appears to be its terminal stage. I wonder if we can love our dissatisfaction, view it as essential, remember that dissatisfaction is what makes us reach further and keeps us alive to possibilities both seen and unseen. What also gets in the way is noise, of course, the sort of feedback and static that obscures the potential that inheres in simple presence and attention. Despite the distance that defines the past year, many of us had an irrefutable reminder in the protests of this potential, of what can happen when people are physically together, paying attention to each other and to the world. But as we know, the open-ended consciousness that many of us are coming out of the pandemic year hoping dearly to retain and to deepen, it is powerfully vulnerable to the status quo and to the temptation of melting back into familiar categories and patterns. And 
we are incredibly handicapped in our capacity to think into the unknown by the fact that we all, I'm just guessing, have smartphones and thus have made ourselves reachable, as the late writer Mark Fisher, known for his blog K-Punk, put it. We're reachable by the imperatives of capitalism at every point in the day at any place in the world. What better device than an iPhone to prevent a person from cultivating negative capability? After all, iPhones don't tolerate uncertainty. They blast us with information and stimulation and various forms of the given until all we are often left with is the existential state that is least conducive to changing or creating anything, a dull anxiety, exhaustion, and unease. I would guess that most of you are drawn to design as a practice that engages your sense of negative capability, that gives you a process to understand how we are, how we act, how we meet or fail to meet our needs and, want to, and what unexplored space lies beyond that. I'd guess that you're drawn to design as a process that asks you to make sense of things as they are in order to envision how they might be, a process that actively generates questions and requires you to map out possibilities in return. To practice, in other words, that makes you more present in order to allow you to see beyond. This is the essential reason that I write, but I still forget this constantly. I have to remind myself by saving spaces to write that are open-ended, that are aimless, that are not monetized, and that are outside the systems that otherwise govern our work. I want to encourage you to do this with the impulses that made you a designer. We often enter the professional world thinking that the more successful we are, the more we will be free to fly the flag of our deepest values. But it's equally likely that success will divert you from those values unless you are constantly making active choices to the contrary. Essentially, every system at work in this country pushes us towards individualism over collectivity, towards comfort and self-satisfaction over discomfort and humility, towards stasis over change. It's my hope for all of us that the instincts that drew us towards our own processes of sense-making and possibility mapping will make us more present in the world, not as it's given to us, but as it really is and as it could be. And these days, as far as negative capability goes, I've been asking myself over and over, what have I previously failed to see as possible in terms of accountability to others? The structures that surround us do not lead towards solidarity and often appropriate it. Just as capitalism has a way of seamlessly absorbing anti-capitalist impulses, capitalist individualism often satisfies our desire for collectivity in ways that ultimately benefit the individual above all. Part of the problem to me is the way identity is often presented to us as primar primarily a matter of individual authority and subjectivity, rather than as it could be, primarily a grounds from which we access common interests and common struggles, common efforts to change our collective situation. All year, I've been thinking about something the organizer Miriam Kava wrote in 2019. Who are you accountable to in this world? She asks, because that will tell me who you are. Richard Powers writes something similar in his novel, The Overstory. Whoever you're accountable to, you will grow to resemble them in the end. You might be listening to this and thinking, yes, this sounds fine enough. This sounds like all the stuff I've been thinking anyway, but how do we put this into practice? Concretely, what do we do? That's up to all of you to figure out. And I mean that to say it has to be every single one of our responsibilities to engage these questions in our particular set of circumstances and suggest answers to the people around us exactly where we are. There are no answers outside the particular. I was struck recently reading a passage by the British farmer, James Rebanks, who writes in his new book about the shift from traditional farming to contemporary big agri-farming, the sort of efficient, high yield American style farming with the sole goal of maximizing immediate profit, no matter the effects on the land or the animals or the workers or the climate. The whole system was so fragmented and specialized, he writes, that most people working within it were either ignorant of its unintended effect or worse, lost in a kind of magical optimism that somehow nature would be okay. There were profoundly important questions about the potential effects of each new technology that it was nobody's job to ask or answer. There was no mechanism for farmers or ecologists to judge whether a technology or a new practice was on balance a good thing or a bad thing 
And we didn't really know when we had crossed the invisible threshold from one to the other. God knows I'm not a farmer, but this has stuck with me. How do we make it all of our jobs to ask questions about the everyday particulars of the systems and the institutions that contain us, to reframe those particulars as fungible and plastic, vulnerable to change and open to possibility? How do we build this work into all the work that already exists? In pursuit of this, in pursuit of the processes of embracing uncertainty and seeing beyond, I urge you to pay close attention to the thoughts you have that can't be categorized or summed up neatly. Articulate in some form your unformed hopes, your reactions of dissatisfaction, your instincts that are reaching for something you don't understand quite yet. Pay attention to what you haven't said out loud, what you fear broaching, what you yearn for most deeply, what feels too complex to see all at once or to talk about neatly. Hone in on whatever it is in you that is straining past the boundaries of our language and our governing structures. Make space for that in yourself and in others with all the sustained discomfort and confusion and conflict that it will entail. This, this continual, daily, moment by moment, never ending process, this is the way to discovery and surprise and beauty into the work that you'll be able to stand behind. This is the way to find more within us and in our world than we can currently see. I'm gonna leave you with two thoughts. The first is from the ecologist Robin Wall Kimmerer, who notes in her book, Gathering Moss, that mosses soak up water and grow prolifically when moisture is plentiful. But when the air dries up, moss becomes desiccated. For other plants, this would be fatal, but most mosses are immune to death by drying as I'm sure all the landscape architects know quite well. For them, Kimmerer writes, desiccation is simply a temporary interruption in life. Mosses may lose up to 90% of their moisture and still survive to restore themselves when water is replenished. Even after 40 years of dehydration in a musty specimen cabinet, mosses have been fully revived after a dunk in a Petri dish. Mosses are icons, in other words, of negative capability. So if there's a part of you that feels like desiccated moss right now, just watch and be open and be ready for the rain. The second thought is from the actor Mads Mikkelsen, who was interviewed recently by Vulture. My approach to what I do in my job, and it might even be, might even be the approach to my life, is that everything I do is the next most, is the most important thing I do, he said. Whether it's a play or the next film, it is the most important thing. I know it's not going to be the most important thing and, I, and it might not be close to being the best, but I have to make it the most important thing. That means I will be ambitious with my job and not with my career. That's a very big difference because if I'm ambitious with my career, everything I do now is just stepping stones leading to something, a goal I might never reach. And so everything will be disappointing. But if I make everything important, then eventually it will become a career. Big or small, we don't know, but at least everything was important. I think that's it. I think that's everything. Thank you for having me and congratulations to all of you again. Gia, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm really blown away. I have to admit that I was a little surprised that you agreed to do this talk so quickly when, when I in, sent the invitation to you, because I can't imagine a harder year to give a commencement speech. You managed to avoid being Pollyannish or saccharine. Uh, you were direct and honest, um, but still gave us inspiration and hope with a message that I think couldn't be more accurate or more urgent for the moment. So I really want to thank you for that. And, and I can tell you that I'm going to return to your words again and again for my own hope through uncertainty and my appreciation of, of your intelligence and your guidance. So thank you so much. Thank you. So in just a few moments, we'll proceed with the diploma ceremony. But before we do, I'm very pleased to welcome back the Tamika Reed Quartet for their performance of One More Piece. Thank you. 
Thank you again to Mika, Mary, Toma, and Jason for that wonderful performance. And at this time, I'm honored to begin this year's diploma ceremony. Mark Lee, the chair of the Department of Architecture, now joins me again. Hey, Mark, welcome back. Hi, Sarah. So, so what, what, what's interesting with this ceremony, usually at commencement, all you really get to look at for differences among the students are shoe choices. This year, what we get to see is each student has chosen an image, their own image, and so we get to actually see a lot of personality come through. Before we go into the diploma ceremony, I wondered if you had any words of wisdom that you'd like to share with the graduates and their families, Mark. Uh, yes, I do, uh, Sarah. And since Gia avoided being Pollyannish and saccharine, I would do that. Uh, so uh, on behalf of the Department of Architecture, I'd like to offer the class of 2021 my utmost congratulations. Uh, some of you might remember something I said at your first open house. Our department has long been at the global forefront in advancing the discipline and the practice of architecture. You're now part of this tradition of excellence, and we look forward to build upon this tradition with all of you as part of the GSD family. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce Andrew Holder, Associate Professor of Architecture and the Director of Master in Architecture One program, who will present the candidates for the Master in Architecture degree. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to join you here at our virtual commencement ceremony. I owe the class of 2021 my personal thanks and, frankly, a debt of gratitude. Despite a global pandemic, despite nearly unprecedented political turmoil, you guys formed the core of an intellectual community that I kept looking to for inspiration, support, and for ideas 
about how architects can survey the world around them and turn our present circumstances into something positive for the discipline. I am eternally grateful. And now I'm honored to present the candidates for the degree Master in Architecture. Brayton Edward Gregory, Class Marshal. Mina Wasti Ahmed. Kofi Akakpo. Salwa Ali Alkudeiri. Alejandra Avalos Guerrero. Mark Robert Bavoso. Willem Reeves Bogardis. Calvin Ray Boyd II. Jason Efren Bravo. Charles Burke. Zoe Yu Men Tsai. With distinction. Bi Ru Tso. Matt Catro. With distinction. Grace Ching Him Chi. Pei Tong Chan. Sarah Sum In Chung with distinction. Jeremy A. Benson. Benson Chen. Kaya Chin. Lauren Sao Wan Choi. Taylor Cook. Julian Cuff Daly with distinction. Liza DeAngelis. Cynthia Wei Dung, with distinction. Zishan Dung. Mark Alphonse De Sauvage. Benjamin DeNapoli. Zixing Wan Wan Fei. Yuming Fen. Alejandro Fernandez Grande, with distinction. Vladimir Gintoff. Nadej Giroudé. Jonathan Michael Gregoric. Aria Dominique Davis Griffin. Ian Grosgall, with distinction. Xi'an Yu Kwok, Mio Han, Rebecca Han, Wang Jung Han, Matthew Hayes, Ashley Hickman, Hannah Connolly Hoyt, with distinction, Yi Young Huang, Stephen Huang, Chung Han Huang, Goli Jalali, Anna Kertner, with distinction, Hiroshi Kaneko, Sohan Kang, Aryan Kaligi, Jasper Leong, Alex Yuion Li, with distinction. Proe Liao. Jishin Lin. Yashuan Liu. Anna Gabriela Loza Nalasco. Mohammed Sabri El Alfi. Adam. Mazaro, Marika Minen, Jiangpu Meng, Adam Macrane, Andrew Mbuthia Ngure, Han Nueng, Don O'Keefe, 
with distinction. Brian Joseph Ortega Welch, with distinction. Arta Perezic. Matthew Pugh. Alfred Poon. Julia Louise Schubach. Divya Shetty. Angela Snezinski. Sophia Sofianu. Yi Chi Song. Isabel Dunham Strauss. Ni Tran. Samantha Victoria Vassure. Sun Vu. Jeffrey Wong. Yifei U. Shaina Young. Yoho Young. Stephen Young. George Zhang. Zhao Sheng. Ji Zhou. My congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Andrew, and congratulations to our architecture graduates. I think it's telling of this interdisciplinarity in our school that so many of our architecture graduates were photographed in nature, though I did notice both the Whitney and the Guggenheim interiors and maybe the Wexner. I couldn't tell, George, if you were in the Wexner. And now, Landscape Architecture Chair Anita Berzbietja joins me again for diplomas in the Department of Landscape Architecture. Hi, Anita. Welcome back. Hi, Sarah. So Ho hopefully we'll see as many buildings as we saw landscapes in the architecture <laughs> uh, graduates. I think that'll be interesting <laughs> to see. So tell me what words of wisdom would you like to impart to your graduates yeah. for them and their families to hear before we go into their diplomas? Absolutely. Uh, on behalf of the landscape architecture faculty, I commend you for your achievements for sustaining exceptional intellectual growth and commitment in spite of the challenges we've all had to face. We saw you redirect what began last summer as anger and deep reckoning into great design, research, and scholarship. You brought to the surface hidden narratives of past divisions and injustice and turned these into landscapes of dialogue, inclusion, and justice. You have been extraordinary students, and you leave the GSD well prepared and ready to transform your world. Stay with your cause, stay optimistic, and especially stay in contact with your classmates and GSD friends, and continue to collaborate with each other as you have learned to do while you're here. And finally, I also want to congratulate your family, friends, and significant others who have supported you in so many ways. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce Gareth Doherty, Associate Professor of Landscape Architecture and Director of the Master in Landscape Architecture degree programs, who will present the candidates for this degree. Greetings to each of you in different parts of the world. I just want to say how proud I am of the graduating class to have accomplished so much given all the challenges of the past year and more. As designers, we know how important it is to imagine new ways of living together. And over the past year, we've come to realize just how essential landscape architecture is for our well-being and cities. Go for a walk, smell the vegetation, breathe fresh air, listen to the birds. One of the joys of teaching is in getting to know my students through their papers. Alison Wright, one of our graduating students, wrote about the power of dreams. Dreaming, said Alison, is a bit like designing, where we take elements of, our, of the world and we reassemble and restitch them together. So my wish for you, as you commence this new phase of life, is to have good dreams and to build upon what you've learned at the GSD as you realize those dreams. And on that note, it gives me great pleasure to present the following candidates for the degree 
of Master in Landscape Architecture. Kira Stein, Class Marshal, with distinction. Mina Wasti Ahmed. Ayami Akagawa. Ariel B. Chun Chan. Jackie Chan. Echo Chan. Shinyi Chan. Kira Bray Klingen, with distinction. Caroline Wells Craddock. Laura Tsui. Alexandra Lee Di Stefano. Sarah Madeline Dunan. Mingnan Du. Yifan Fung. Kara Gadecki. Brittany Alexis Jun Giliani, with distinction. Alana Sahar Godner Abravanel. Juan David Grisales. Shira Grossman. Anne Hayner. Kongwin Ho. Chelsea Emily Kashan. Natalie Ku. Joanne Lee. Matthew Leibel. Chiangang Liu. Jolene Esther May McPherson. Kobe Moreno, with distinction. Jenna Margus, with distinction. Ali Khan Arif Neki. Han Win. Jem Chavapong Pipat Seri Tan. Dominic Beitu Riolo. Carrie Reinestow. Tan Cheng. Polly Sinclair. Maxwell Nathan Smith Holmes, with distinction. Olivia So. Chloe Marie Saltis. An Sun, Shi Tang, Ada Thomas, Michele Turini, Maria Paula Uoa Granja, Sam E. Valentine, Eric Michael Van Driesen, Gracie Villa, Kanchan Wally Richardson, Guan Yi Wang, Hao Wang, Ifan Wang, Zhao Di Wong, Kimberly Diane Ware, Lee Williams, Alison Irwin Wright, with distinction, Jianyi Zhang, Jinying Zhang, Yuning Zhang. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Gareth, and congratulations to our landscape graduates. I have to say, I'm, I'm wondering whether Jenna Morgus's lobster ended up back in the sea or in her tummy. And now, Rahul Maotra, chair of the Department of Urban Planning and Design, joins me again with a live feed from Brookline. I'm sure that you, like Mark and Anita, have some words of wisdom for your graduating students, right, Rahul? Thanks, Sarah. Yes, yes. I, you know, before I begin, I'd, I'd like to just sort of underscore you know, what an incredible year this has been, both for our students, well, the faculty, but also for their families. And, you know, really one collectively, we all hope that some good will come out of the limitations and the challenges that we've faced. I perhaps think one of the most positive impacts of the pandemic uh, has been that it's equipped us to see the world in multiple ways, perhaps more critically with more empathy. And you know, I think our class day speaker was such a perfect choice, Sarah, that she really articulated this incredibly well. You know, the recognition also of the failure of the state, the failure of our context, uh, recognizing failure as a beginning, cultivating and articulating your dissatisfaction as a first step to move to positive aspirations. I think she framed it so beautifully and just want to reinforce that. And I think we've prepared our students really well for these challenges as uh, and this complex world they go into. And the last thing I want to say is that, uh, you know, we have all uh, experienced some form of loss uh, in this last year. But really, we must remind ourselves that the fact that we have gathered here in celebration is also a blessing, albeit virtually. Uh, and it is with this awareness of this blessing that I think we should all go out to remake the world as we see it fit. And, and for the students, may all the good luck surround you as you go forth. And it's, it's now my great pleasure to begin this part of the ceremony for the Department of Urban Planning and Design by presenting our one candidate for the degree 
of Master of Landscape Architecture in Urban Design. Adam Makies, who is graduating with distinction and who is our class marshal. I'm pleased to present the candidates for the degree Master of Architecture in Urban Design. Alia Bader with distinction. Cadence Bailey. Craig Michael Bokenhagen. Jack Chung. Pei Feng Chung. Wu Wang Chung. Christopher Diameko, Shishu Dung, Eubin Dong, Jiha Chi Hen, Tian Alice Han, Kore Adnan Ituhare Ariola, Iris Kim, Biko Li Yu, Dan Lu, Vardan Metta. Zihan May, Sam Naila with distinction, Pam Pan, Zeng Ren, Yuki Takata, Tehin Yuhe Shihao, Yan Wei Young, Lan Shun Zen, Nigel Zhang, Yi Jang. Ahurang Zeng. Congratulations to everyone. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Anne Forsyth, the Ruth and Frank Stanton Professor of Urban Planning and Director of the Master in Urban Planning Program, who will present the candidates for this degree. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. It's a pleasure to be part of this virtual commencement today. Before I begin, I would just like to say that it is certainly a time with many challenges, but for planners, it's also a time when people are coming together to make a difference in the areas that we care about from climate to equity, and you can be part of those positive changes. And now I'm honored to present the candidates for the degree Master in Urban Planning. Sarah Savannah Smith, Class Marshal. Natasha Abaza. Clara Delali Ameno. Acelio Emmanuel Aponte. Andriani Wira Admaja. G.A. Hasina Azad with Distinction. David Anthony Bemparad. Ariel B. Emma Dylan Bird. Anna Carlson with Distinction. Erin Raphael Chilowich with Distinction. Kyle Morrison Cohen. Mary Catherine Coughlin. Cynthia Wei Dung. Vladimir Gintoff. Carly Griffith. Stephen Wan Ku. Charles Reuven Starobin Hatfield. Cecily Noel Hill with distinction. Julian Martin Huertas. Elena Iron. Asha Kaplan. Avanti Crovi. Anne Lynn with distinction. Sarah Littlefield with distinction. Lillian Mensah, 
Kyle Miller. Elifmina Mizrahi. Tandi Niambosi with distinction. Martin Javier Quiroga Barrera Oro. Carrie Reunersdahl. Catherine Emily Saint. Javier Silva. Leah Rayshon Smith. Kira Stein with distinction. Mary Louise Chatters Taylor. Nora Ann Tufano. Bobby Wong. Wenzheng Wong. Alison Berwin Wright. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Anne, and congratulations to our urban planning and design graduates. Um, it may be that I missed lunch, but I did note that there so far has only been one person with food, and that was ice cream. And now I'd like to invite K. Michael Hayes, director of the Master in Design Studies program, back to join me. Hi, Michael. Hey, Sarah. I, I love watching these photographs. It's so much fun. It's incredible, actually. I, you really capture personality through their choices. It's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. So um, tell me, what would you like to share with all your graduates and their families? We, as you know, this is, was my first year, as you said, my first year directing the MDES program. So I, I, wanna, I, I do want to address the students. It's, it's interesting. Uh, we're looking at this big screen of, of, of commencements, and I keep thinking my, my entire encounter with these students uh, was on Zoom, and there were many encounters. Um, because it was my first year and because they had already um, finished a year, these, these students were, were formed, were, were very well formed already when I came in. And uh, we introduced some changes um, which made for some trying moments. There was some disagreement um, and there were some trying moments on both sides. But, but our students, and then this is not to mention, of course, the pandemic and, and the sort of global uh, events, but these students found very creative, original ways of anchoring themselves in, in very different contexts, in very unexpected contexts, in sometimes difficult contexts. Many were remote from Cambridge. Uh, they were in places where they just happened to have ended up for the summer. But they, a lot of them used those contexts, uh, the, 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 the difficult situations uh, and, and the actual physical context. Some of them used them as sites for their projects. Um, you reached, you students reached very deep. You were filled with determination and you used the skills that you had acquired uh, in your studies. So I think the originality of the work that I saw from this class, the commitment, the absolute commitment that all of them had to their final terms of their uh, classes and of their research, and all of this came together uh, for you uh, with work of the highest quality. Um, so I really got to know these students in, in a difficult moment, but I've come, I got, to, I should say to the students, I got to know you in a difficult moment, but I've come to admire you all, and I wish you the very best for your future careers. And now it is with honor that I present the program's candidates for the degree Master in Design Studies. Kevin Liu, Class Marshal. Fatma Hassan Al Alawi. Dan Backlick. Arshad Balwa. Ryan Bites. Jazz Serenity Bonin Aldots, with distinction. Charles Burke. Quan Ting Chan. Peitong Chan with distinction. Yuxian Chan. Jack Chan. Kira Bree Klingen with distinction. Adriana David. Bert de Jonge. 
Martin Decky, Yu Bin Dong, Kai Hong Kao, Andrew Gibbs, Juan David Grisales, Shira Grossman, Caleb Hawkins with distinction, Benjamin Hayes, Julie Ann Hoffman with distinction, Yi Dan Hu, Zidong Huang, Aaron Lindsay Hunt, Yu Tong Jiang, Hiroshi Kenako, Vrinda Kenvinda, Alexandra Kozak, Wa Chang Mike Kwok, Agustina Labarca Gatica, with distinction, Jaywan Lee, Jun Hang Lee, Robert Morris Levine, with distinction, Emma Grace Lewis, with distinction, John Yu Lee, Proi Liao, with distinction, Sung Hwan Lim, Ji Shen Lin, Ri Jong Liu, Shin Ru Liu, Hermano Luz Rodriguez, Jennifer Matchett with distinction, Celine Mazar, Fatma Mahmood, Patricia Miao, Blake David Mitchell, Adriana Pablos, Melissa Ponce Santos, Sasson Rafaelov, Gabriel Redding, Katerina N. Richter Lunn, Maria Elena Roldan Castro, David Rosenwasser, Kyle Christopher Ryan, Divya Saraf with distinction, Sanjana Sharma, Lair Rashawn Smith, Rinjia Tian, Venus S, Samantha Victoria Vasur, Jan Joseph Votohovich with distinction, Shirley Menghan Wong, Bobby Wong, Tian Yu Wong, Yu Wong, Zehaudi Wong, Zijing Wong, Matthew Wilcox, Owen Wilcock, Fei Xiong, Kung Yu Xiong, Ayaka Yamashita, Sheng Yan, Hyung Yang, Ilya Yazdanpana, Lei Ye, Stephanie Li Yong, Di Zen, Birdia Ying Zhou. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Michael, and congratulations, Master in Design Studies graduates. Um, particular congratulations to Arshad Balwa and your small baby. That must have been quite an accomplishment this year, along with everything else. He looks adorable. And now, Martin Bechtold, co-director of the Master in Design Engineering program, returns to our GSD commencement stage. Martin, I know you have some thoughts that you'd like to impart to our MDE students and their families before they receive their diplomas and become alumni. Sure, thanks, Sarah. Um, we've heard a lot of reflections on this year. I'd like to take a different angle, which is to think about this academic year and any academic year, really, as a flight. You take off in September, you know, take off, then you spend some time in the air teaching and learning. This year, we were probably overdosed on in-flight entertainment and it's actually today 
that we land the plane, you land the plane. Now looking back on this particular flight, it's probably feeling like a turbulent ride, a bumpy ride. But I will say, having discussed this with the faculty, the work produced by you, the graduates, was really compelling and pathetic. It was technical and creative. The work, it makes us optimistic that we actually can affect positive change, and that is wonderful. It makes the bumpiness worthwhile in the end. I hope you feel that same way. I would like to thank our graduates, congratulate them, and thank our faculty and staff for all their positive energy. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce for Wasabal, Executive Dean for Education Research at the Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Science, who up until recently served with me as co-director of the Master in Design Engineering program. For us, we present the candidates for this degree. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining this virtual commencement day. On behalf of the MDE faculty and administration from the Graduate School of Design and Harvard Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, I extend my warm greeting and congratulations to our students and their families. Students, you have passed through an incredible year with isolation and safety challenges. Yet, despite all of that, you have excelled and have done an amazing job. You have created inventions and innovations to mitigate and solve several wicked challenges. Congratulations. Now you're ready to go out to the world. Go out and inspire people and guide them as you continue advancing your mission to help society find a better future. Recognize, we recognize you as colors and designers, as problem solvers. Congratulations on your completing the requirement for the Masters in Design Engineering. And now, I'm very honored to present the candidate for the degree, Master in Design Engineering. Arushi Saxena, with distinction, last marshal. Ulwa Tusin Elio. Trevor. Storm Cobb, Nabur Gurger, Audrey Haq, Sayed Muhammad Rafi Jawad, Charmi Kabur, Divyanka Kabur, Sarah Christine Ubar, with distinction, Elizabeth Price, Hiroiki. Chindu, Kate Tompkins, Lisa Yuyun Zhu. Congratulations, everyone, and so long. Thank you, Fawaz, and congratulations, Master of Design Engineering graduates, on all your achievements. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Ali Malkawi, Professor of Architectural Technology, director of the Doctor of Design Studies program and founding director of the Harvard Center for Green Buildings and Cities. It's wonderful to see you on screen, Ali. So our school is 50% international. Our student body is 50% international. And I'm struck again today by how international our faculty is too. We have, uh, even on this, this group of faculty who are participating today, we have Mark who's from Hong Kong, Anita, who's from Venezuela, Rahul's from, Indiana, uh, from India, Michael's from Alabama, and you are from Jordan, which is where you are right now. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, very nice to see you, uh, Sarah. I'm in Amman, Jordan. Uh, it's wonderful to be with my family, but I miss Cambridge, too, I have to say. It's been a while. Yeah, we, you know, everyone is spread all over the place this year, which has its advantages. It's wonderful that you can visit your family, but um, I am very much looking forward to having everyone back here in Gun Central um, starting in the fall. So I look forward to that. Tell me, are there words that you would like to share with your graduates and their families? Absolutely. Thanks again, Sarah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be part of this virtual commencement. Today, we celebrate an inspiring group of graduates and their many accomplishments. Their insightful work and dedication, particularly this past year, is a unique testament to their ability to adapt in changing and complex world. From exploring the role of forests in contemporary urban transformations, to investigating the specialities of radio astronomy, 
This class has made impactful contributions that will help the built environment and ultimately the communities we live in. The world is definitely ready for you. We need your thoughtfulness, your creativity, as well as your passion to solve the most pressing issues to create a better future for all. And now I'm very honored to present the candidates for the Doctor of Design degree. Before I begin though, I would like to make one note. Typically, a doctoral student is hooded during this ceremony. And importantly, the student's advisor is present for that moment. Because we cannot replicate this ritual online, each graduate's advisor has sent me a brief letter to their students, which I'll gladly share. And without further ado, I'm pleased to present the candidates for the Doctor of Design degree. Julia Claire Smakilo, who is our class marshal. The title of Julia's dissertation is Nature State, Incentivize Forests in Southern Ontario. Julia's advisor is Neil Brenner, Lucy Flower, Professor of Urban Sociology at the University of Chicago. Neil's share the following note addressed to Julia. Dear Julia, how should we understand the role of forests in contemporary urban transformations? How can forests be repaired and preserved, even as they are enmeshed within an expanding fabric of capitalist urbanization? Your Dida's thesis presents a powerful theoretical perspective and original empirical analysis of these questions, which have become especially urgent in the context of contemporary urban climate emergencies. Please receive my warmest congratulations for your outstanding Dida's research which seamlessly combines social and environmental theory, landscape studies, ethnography, and visual studies to produce an original investigation. With affection and respect, Neil Brenner. Next is Ignacio Cardona. Ignacio's dissertation is titled, Spatial Opportunities for Self-Produced Environments, the case of Caracas. Ignacio's advisor is Anita Beresbetia, Professor of Landscape Architecture and Chair of the Department of Landscape Architecture. Anita shared the following note addressed to Ignacio. Dear Ignacio, this degree is one step of many you have taken and will continue to take in your quest for social justice in the city. You examined the full breadth of the literature, synthesized its frameworks, and applied this knowledge to the historical development of self-produced cities to the conditions of Caracas. Rejecting previous models that reduce the problem to a question of housing, you introduce a systemic understanding of this mode of urbanization that when added to your decades long practice produced a major work, giving us powerful insights into the challenge that affects millions of people in Latin America. Congratulations and best of luck in the years to come, Anita. Next is Michael Chifalo. Michael's dissertation is titled, Dung, Death, and Disease, Livestock and Capitalist Urbanization in the United States from the early 19th century to the present. Michael's advisor is also Professor Neil Brenner. Neil shared the following note addressed to Michael. Dear Mike, how can we understand the role of non-human animals, in the dynamics of capitalist urbanization? Your brilliant DDS thesis offers us an insightful guide to this question. Please receive my warmest congratulations for your powerful and original contribution to our understanding of the contemporary urban condition. I wish you all the best in your future contributions to the projects of creating more socially just, caring, and environmentally sane forms of urban life for human and non-human beings. With affection and respect, Neil Brenner. Next is Daniel Dow. Daniel's dissertation is titled Synthetic Ecologies, Design and the Ecological Imagination. Daniel's advisor is Charles Wildheim, John Irving Professor of Landscape Architecture and the Director of the Office for Urbanization. Charles shared the following letter addressed to Daniel. Congratulations, Daniel, on your timely defense of the dissertation and your appointment as an associate professor at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico in Mexico City. 
while it was a long and occasionally exhilarating ride, I have appreciated your intense focus and capacity for reading deeply into the origins of our ecological thought. You have produced a work of great depth and original thought. Your work promises to be of profound importance of discourse, pedagogy, and practice across the design disciplines. Congratulations again, Charles. Next is Von Horn. Von's dissertation is titled, Architectural Hybrids Shaped by the Times, Moments of Public Housing in the US. Von's advisor is Peter Rowe, Raymond Gard Professor of Architecture and Urban Design and Harvard University's Distinguished Service Professor. Peter shared the following note addressed to Vaughn. Dear Vaughn, thank you for allowing me to be around during this productive and eventful time in your life. I must also say that I have missed our regular discussions with Alex during the past few months. You have constantly made us aware that thesis advising is a two-way street as we become more and more the beneficiaries of your efforts. Please preserve your passion for your causes and remember that more work on Hilliard Robinson and others like him would be greatly appreciated. Please also remember that we are just a phone call away. It has been my privilege to know you. Salutations to Michelle and to the lovely Harlow. Congratulations and warm regards. Peter. Next is Daniel Libanez. Daniel's dissertation is titled Metabolic Urbanism, Epistemologies, Lineages, and Prospects. Daniel's advisor is also Professor Charles Wilder. Charles shared the following note addressed to Daniel. Congratulations, Danny, on this milestone on the long bike race. Over the past decade, you have been a solid citizen and an effective leader in the MDES and DDES programs. Your work sets a model for the complete commitment to the institutional and disciplinary potentials of the GSD. From your involvement with the Urban Theory Lab, New Geographies, the Third Coastal Atlas, to Harvard Spain Student Association and the Office for Urbanization, you have made an indelible contribution to the life of the school and we are better for it. Congratulations again, Charles. Next is Jingping Liu. Jingping's dissertation is titled the evolution and retrofitting of work unit communities under a self-organizing logic, cases in Nanjing, China. Jinping's advisor also is Professor Peter Rowe. Peter shared this note addressed to Jinping. Dear Jinping, Gong Si Ha, Gan Da Hao, congratulations and well done. And what a stunning performance. Yours is among the most complete and balanced dissertations. It has been my privilege to supervise. My hope is that the powers that be at Dongnan University recognizes what a talent they have in their midst. Rest assured that when I'm in China, I will try to come by and visit you. Also, if you come back to the US, you will always have a safe and welcoming place to be with us at the GSD. Shei Shi, Chu Yi, and Chen, thank you and please be safe. Wu Qingda, warmly, Peter. Next is Miguel Lopez Melendez. The title of Miguel's dissertation is Urbanism and Autonomy. Miguel's advisor is Professor Charles Waltham. Charles shared the following note addressed to Miguel. Congratulations, Miguel, on the completion of your dissertation which Moisen Mustavavi, George Bird, and I found to be convincingly researched, well-argued, and persuasive. Over the past several years of working together, I have come to enjoy your good humor and warmth, as well as your capacity for deep thinking across a range of subjects. You have made an important contribution during your time at the GSD as a researcher, teacher, and editor. Your dissertation promises to make an equal important contribution to how we think about architecture of the city. Congratulations again, Charles. Next is Chuan Yi Maxwell Nye. Chuan Yi's dissertation is titled The Civic Value and Economic Promise of Medical Cities in the United States and China. Chuan Yi's advisor is Alex Krieger, 
research professor in practice of urban design. Alex shared the following note addressed to Shuanyi. Dear Shuanyi, with much admiration and on behalf of professors Winnie Yip, Anthony Sank, and Richard Pizer, advisors representing his broad range of interests, congratulations to Shuanyi Maxwell Nye for providing considerable insights regarding the increasing impacts of the EDS and MEDS economies on urban developments, both in the US and China. To do this require undertaking extensive research in topics as diverse as national healthcare policies and economies, urban planning and design, real estate development, politics and governance. In addition to analyzing and comparing the healthcare industries of both countries, the dissertation offers valuable recommendations for how each nation might learn from the other to further citizens' health and well-being. Congratulations on your achievement, Alex. Next is Andrena Sehas Haspe. Andrena's dissertation is titled Governing the Urban Night, Understanding the Shifting Dynamics of Nighttime Governance in Three Global Cities. Andreina's advisor is Diane Davis, Charles Dyer, Norton Professor of Regional Planning and Urbanism. Diane shared the following note addressed to Andreina. Dear Andreina, when you first walked into my office five years back, I had an inkling that you were going to be widely successful at the GST. You already had a focus problem, the nightmare, and the nocturnal governance, and were ready to dive headlong into it. You were also pioneering the study of an impactful global phenomenon. You switched career paths and dedicated yourself to this research. And now your mastery of this original provocative topic has put you in high demand as speaker and policy advisor. You have indeed more than surpassed any of my already high original expectations. You are a model for the next generation of policy and action-oriented scholars who want to make cities more prosperous, just, and equitable. Please don't forget us here at the GSD. Congratulations, Diane. Next is Ashley Elizabeth Tannebaum. Ashley's dissertation is titled, If You Build It, Will They Innovate? Investigating the Design and Operation of Higher Education Innovation Centers. Ashley's advisor is Anne Forsyth. Ruth and Frank Stanton, Professor of Urban Planning and the Director of the Master in Urban Planning Program. And share the following note addressed to Ashley. Ashley, it has been wonderful working with you on your dissertation, in classes and on research projects. You are organized and thoughtful, sunny and inquiring, collaborative and self-directed. Your doctoral work on higher education innovation center bridges disciplines to ask a larger question about what can buildings really do to improve people's lives? This is surely an important question in the current period. As you go on to a new academic position, I'm glad you will continue to engage those vital issues. All the best, Anne. Next is Guy Trangosh. The title of Guy's dissertation is Fortress Science, the Specialities of Radio Astronomy. Guy's advisor also is Professor Neil Brenner. Neil shared the note addressed to Guy. Dear Guy, how is scientific practice materialized in spatial arrangements? How do large scale scientific endeavors transform landscapes near and far? Your remarkable DEDA thesis confronts these puzzles through a fascinating investigation of the specialities of radio astronomy a form of fortress science that involves the bounding of scientific activity from worldly connections and simultaneously myriad articulations to labor, flows of material and landscapes transformations. Please receive my warmest congratulations for this wonderful research contribution. Good luck in your future endeavors at the interface of critical urban research and architectural practice. With affection and respect, Neil Brenner. And we will conclude with Han van de Berg. Han's dissertation is titled Equity and Climate Change Adaptation Towards a Better Understanding of Resource Allocations. Han's advisor also is Professor Peter Rowe. P. 
Peter shared the following note addressed to Han. Dear Han, it has been such a pleasure to have your good humored and classy presence in the school for the past few years. When we had that drink in Singapore and you introduced me to Tess, I thought to myself, she has the right stuff. Now that you're gone, let me say, please always follow your instinct and don't get lost in the rhetorical weeds. Please give Tess and Eleanor a hug for me and I hope to see you all soon. Warmly, Peter. P.S. I couldn't think of anything Dutch to say, even though I would have enjoyed your throaty laugh as I mangled the pronunciation. Congratulations to these amazing 13 individuals, and thank you. Thank you, Ali, and congratulations, Doctor of Design graduates. What an amazing array of projects, and um, also congratulations to Von Horn for his small child. Congratulations. So now I'd like to welcome Dr. Erica Naginski, Robert P. Hubbard, Professor of Architectural History and Director of the PhD program. It is so wonderful to have you here in Gund, Erica. What was it like for you coming in the building? I have to say, it was lovely to see you in person. It's nice to see you on the screen again. <laughs> um, but what a magnificent day this has been. Um, I'm deeply moved by seeing the faces of all our students and celebrating their work. Um, this morning when I walked in, it was the third day I had actually uh, come into Gunt Hall um, and worn a dress for the first time in over a year, <laughs> which is rather ridiculous, and walked by my office and seen the books on the floor. So I really look forward to coming back in the fall and to have everyone uh, together again. Well, it's wonderful having you here. Even if we're not in the same room, we're in the same building, and it's been wonderful to see you. Um, so before the diplomas for the Doctor of Philosophy degree program, can you impart your words of wisdom to these graduates and their families, please? Well, Sarah and uh, dear students, colleagues, friends, and family members gathered together for this wonderful day. Uh, as we've heard again and again, it's been an extraordinary year. The pandemic has had an unprecedented impact on all of us. But I want all of us here today to put yourselves in the shoes of our graduating doctoral students. Here you were, finishing your theses, no travel allowed, no archives open, no means of conducting field work, no way of chasing down your primary sources. All of you are doctoral candidates. You've all faced the challenge of perhaps having to restructure your research topics, the isolation of confinement as you wrote your final drafts, and chasing after faculty positions and postdoctoral fellowships in a period of upheaval like none any of us have ever experienced. I have, in short, never been more proud of the doctoral candidates graduating today. You have all produced brilliant work. And now I am very honored to present the degree candidates. Though before I begin, I would like to repeat Ali's words and say again that typically a doctoral student is hooded during this part of the ceremony. And importantly, the student's advisor is present for that moment. Because we cannot replicate this time honored ritual virtually, each graduate advisor has sent me a brief letter addressed to their student, which I will gladly share. And without further ado, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree. Maria Atuesta Ortiz. Maria's dissertation title is Forced Migration and Neighborhood Formation how communities of internally displaced persons find residential stability in an unstable world. Her advisor is Diane Davis, Charles Dyer Norton Professor of Regional Planning and Urbanism. Diane shared the following note addressed to Maria. Dear Maria, congratulations on all that you have accomplished, including your amazing thesis, born out of so much dedication, commitment, and arduous fieldwork in the Colombian countryside. 
Your research involved tremendous personal and professional fortitude, and you experienced challenges both tangible and intangible. Without experiencing the daily life of your subjects, you could not have written the detailed, grounded, and original narrative that became your doctoral thesis. When you arrived at the GSD, I knew that you were deeply interested in how individual lives are marked by their quotidian experiences in space. You have continued to transcend disciplinary boundaries and to expand your methodological repertoire while staying committed to examining the lives and travails of some of the world's most vulnerable citizens. It has been an honor to accompany you on this journey. Congratulations again, Diane. Next is Brett Michael Colbert. Brett's dissertation title is Britain's Imperial Prospects and the Aesthetic Origins of the Scenografia Americana. I am Brett's advisor, and so Brett, I am very pleased to share this note I have written to you. Dear Brett, I'm truly moved that we are finally at this juncture after years shared thinking about the history of American landscapes. Your dissertation on the Scenografia Americana and the images it contains of the continent from Quebec and the fall of New France to Cuba and the slave trade in the West Indies revealed that you will be one of the leading landscape historians of your generation. Your ability to bridge the politics of empire, environmental history, material culture, and landscape aesthetics is as masterful as it is breathtaking. From you, we learned how the relation of environments to representations of them team with myth, power, and confrontation. Brett, you are poised to shape a field that is coming into its own as never before. I'm so grateful to be part of your intellectual journey. Next is Natalia Escobar Castrillon. Natalia's dissertation title is Reframing the Architectural Conservation Field, the Critical Conservation Works of David Chipperfield Architects, Amateur Architect Studio Lu Weng Yu and Wang Shu, and Lena Bo. Her advisor is K. Michael Hayes, Elliot Noyce Professor of Architectural Theory and Director of the Master in Design Studies Program. Michael shared the following note addressed to Natalia. Congratulations, Natalia. It has been an absolute pleasure and a privilege to work with you since you first came to Harvard in the very first cohort of the MDES Critical Conservation Program. You then continued as the first PhD to work directly in this emerging area of study, founding Oblique, a journal in this field, and eventually teaching one of the required courses in the area. Your dissertation articulated a robust theory of critical conservation, both as a historiographical position and a strategic practice, with a stunning amount of research on architectural projects in Europe, South America, and China. Your work here had a formative effect on our program, and now at graduation, you are already into an impressive career as Assistant Professor of Architecture and Urbanism at Carleton University. I see a bright future for you, Michael. Next is Matthew Thomas Jin. Matthew's dissertation title is The Politics of Pageantry, Dynasticism, Diplomacy, an ephemeral festival architecture in France, 1729 to 1763. I am Matthew's advisor as well. And so Matt, I'm very pleased to share this note I have written to you. Dear Matt, I can't begin to tell you how proud I am of what you have achieved since you first came to Harvard. Your dissertation has laid the foundation for a groundbreaking book on the theater of representation unfurled by the French crown as it faced its own institutional disarticulation over the course of the Enlightenment. The work you undertook exemplifies a brilliant engagement with both a complex array of primary sources and aesthetic debates over verisimilitude in relation to ideology. 
you offer an archive-driven interpretation of the role of mimesis in the public sphere and redefine our understanding of ephemeral architecture as a hybrid realm situated between politics and art. Matt, you are a born teacher, a remarkable scholar, and it has been an honor to be your advisor, friend, and colleague. I wish you the best, Erica. Next is Melanie Sun Min Park. Melanie's dissertation title is The Truss and the Cave, Architecture, Industrial Expertise, and Scientific Knowledge in Post-War Korea, 1953 to 1974. Her advisor also is Professor K. Michael Hayes. Michael shared the following note addressed to Melanie. Dear Melanie, I remember you arriving in that first seminar as one of the millennial globalists who, by virtue of life experience and languages, understood the connectedness and complexity of cultures and the dynamic flows of history. You were a valued teaching fellow for three years, and you later took charge of the complete reconfiguration of our summer online history course for incoming students in architecture. Your dissertation took on nothing less than the story of modern architecture in Korea, all from the unlikely beginnings of designers' first collaborations with chemists and engineers, then with archeologists restoring an eighth century man-made grotto, among your dissertation, several honors and awards is the 2020 Korea Society Sherman Family Emerging, Emerging Scholar Award. Now, at graduation, I count you as a dear colleague and a lifelong friend, Michael. Next is Etienne Santiago. Etienne's dissertation title is Charged Amalgamations of Mass-Produced Housing, Architecture, and Great War Technologies, 1916 to 1926. His advisor is Antoine Picon, G. Ware Travelstead Professor of the History of Architecture and Technology. Antoine shared the following note addressed to Etienne. Dear Etienne, you have been an amazing PhD student, always courteous, apparently serene, as if juggling between family and doctoral research, and more recently, between family, work as assistant professor, and doctoral research, as if all this were the easiest thing to do. You are an extraordinary scholar, Etienne. You have been able to profoundly change the way we look at the relations between modernist architecture, military technologies, and prefabrication. I am sure that whatever enterprise you choose to pursue, you will do it with the supreme calm, the dedication, and creative spirit that you have constantly shown throughout your doctoral studies among us. Warmest regards, Antoine. And we will conclude with Wei Zhang. Wei's dissertation title is Data-Driven Predictive Control Optimization for Natural Ventilation in Buildings. His advisor is Ali Malkawi, Professor of Architectural Technology, Director of the Doctor of Design Program, and Founding Director of the Harvard Center for Green Buildings and Cities. Ali shared the following note addressed to Wei. Dear Wei, congratulations. Your dedication to your work and ability to keep an open mind to enhance your knowledge and skills is remarkable. I know it has been a challenging road, but you have been steady in your journey and achieved your goal. You have mastered complex topics and utilized the resources given to you with intellect and enthusiasm. Even the pandemic did not deter your commitment to your research as you continued your experiments using House Zero while the building was shut down. This is a particularly special moment as you are the first PhD student in technology to graduate at the GSD. I am very proud of you, and I know your family must be too, as you graduate with the highest degree our institution provides. I know you will continue to achieve great things and look forward to witnessing your wonderful accomplishments. Congratulations to all of today's graduates. Thank you. 
Thank you, Erica, and congratulations to the PhD graduates. While I miss the hooding ceremony, I have to say that the letters read by the advisors to both the DDES and the PhD students are, are really moving and, and testimonies of these strong relationships that develop between these students and the faculty. And I congratulate all of them on graduating. And once more, I'd like to congratulate all our graduating students. It's been a very special commencement. It's one that I know I'll never forget. I also want to thank the team that's put this whole event together, all of our department chairs, our program directors, our program coordinators, and the entire communications and events team, especially Ken Stewart, Paige Johnson, Mag Maggie Janik, Estefi Ibanez Moreno, Erica George, Chad Klopfer, and last but not least, media services maestro Matt Smith and the videography team he's brought to Gund. All of these people have seamlessly combined live and recorded feeds to make this virtual commencement reach all of our graduates and their families and friends around the entire globe. To all you graduating today, go confidently into the new world that awaits you. Your education and the perseverance and flexibility you've shown us during this ever-changing year will have prepared you well for the challenges, both ongoing and urgent, global and personal, that await you. Before we officially close this ceremony, I want to make three brief notes. First, graduates, please remember that your department and program social hours will start happening shortly after we close this ceremony. We look forward to seeing you there. I think Erica George has an, emailed everyone a, an updated link on those. Second, I invite everyone to visit the GSD's homepage to view our commencement takeover, including our annual commencement exhibition featuring all the incredible work that students from across the school produce this year. Third, I'd like to highlight staff and faculty who are, in a sense, also graduating this year, those who are retiring from the GSD. Eight staff members retired this year. Bonnie Campbell from the Development Office. Jennifer Vallone from the Finance Office. Kermit Baker, Project Director from the Joint Center for Housing Studies. Kathan Tracy, Director of Development, Major in Principal Giving. Sarah Dickinson, Research, Teaching, and Writing Services Librarian. Jeff Klug, Faculty Director of Design Discovery. Jerry Niederhoff, Director of Admissions. She's the one who let all you in. Merrill Golden, Director of Career Services. She's the one who helped many of you land internships and jobs. The GSD staff is an incredible group. They're dedicated to the school and to our students. We'll miss these eight who are retiring, but we thank you all and we congratulate you too. And sadly, two faculty are graduating as well. Paul Nakazawa, Associate Professor in Practice of Architecture, who has been teaching professional practice at the school for the last 24 years. Additionally, as many faculty noted it as goodbye Zoom Fed a week ago, Paul has advised many, if not most of us on the faculty on how to run a practice. I highly recommend the fantastic podcast conversation that architecture professor Grace Law had with Paul on her podcast, Talking Practice. And second, Jorge Silvetti, the Nelson Robinson Jr. Professor of Architecture, who has been a faculty member here at the GSD since 1975. And for those of you who can't do the math, that's 46 years. Jorge has had an incredible impact, not only on the Department of Architecture, which he chaired from 1995 to 2002, but on the entire school. I don't think I'm alone in wondering how the school can possibly survive without Jorge's thoughtful and incisive input in faculty meetings, in classes, on reviews, always delivered with his Argentinian drawl. Thankfully, Jorge will stay on as a research professor next year. We'll be feting him with a conference and exhibition next year, so please stay tuned. Thank you both to Paul and Jorge. You're both dear friends, dear colleagues, and extraordinary contributors to the GSD. Before we disband our virtual, various virtual social hours with faculty, colleagues, friends, and family, I want to return to you, our graduating students. I have one more request before I let you go. I want you to approach the world out there, the world that needs all of you and your collective intelligence, with what I like to call deliberate intellectual generosity. All three of these words are key. 
deliberate intellectual generosity. I want you to do what you do out there the same way you did your work in here at the GSD. Deliberately situate ideas broadly, joining design to the world. Especially as we've seen over the past year amid a pandemic and a national reckoning over equity, race, and the shape of our global society, our project is a shared one, calling upon each of us to consider our roles in imagining and designing a better world and reminding us how much agency we do hold as designers. And fundamental to that ethos is never to forget to square those general broad views with the particular circumstances. In short, be very deliberate, very conscious of paying attention to both context and to specifics. Continue to challenge yourselves intellectually. It's actually pretty easy to remain awash in generalities, never challenging yourselves with specific circumstances. And it's also easy to bore down into the specifics, never challenging yourself to step back and draw conclusions or posit big synthetic changes. So as we enter a world forever changed, please go out and be deliberate in ensuring that your attention and your passions navigate these two poles of the general and the specific. And be generous in doing so. Generous in seeking and listening to others, and importantly, generous in challenging yourselves. You're all well positioned to do this. We here at the GSD we're grateful for all that you've brought us over these past years. We now look forward to hearing your voices out there. Graduates and families, together with the faculty, I very much look forward to seeing you a bit later in the social hours we've planned. In the meantime, to close out this ceremony, I'm very pleased to introduce one last performance. Natural Information Society is a shifting ensemble of musicians that plays and records music composed by Joshua Abrams. In today's performance, alongside Joshua playing the djimbre, the group features Lisa Alvaredo on harmonium, Kara Burchad on harp, Hamid Drake playing the tar, Nick Mazzarella on alto sax, and May Shugabanto playing the flute. Abrams' layered compositions and the group's long-form environments have been described as ecstatic minimalism, a phrase I love. And Lisa Alvaredo's hanging paintings create a visual analog to the music and contextualize their performance space. Just a few days ago, the group generously performed and recorded a new piece commissioned specifically for our commencement, titled Remarks on Soil, Clouds, and Hope. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck to the graduates of 2021. And to conclude, join me in welcoming Natural Information Society, who will close out our ceremony with their performance. Thank you. <laughs>